Got to be a finalist for the heart, right? He's going to win it. Did you catch any of the Tigers game, Mark? Not a pitch. Pretty good comeback. Pretty solid. Four run ninth inning. Pirates closer is a Pittsburgh grew up 30 minutes from Pittsburgh. He's been great the last three years. They finally get good. He can't get people out. He's blown three out of four save chances. Has he? Yeah. He got booed walking off the mound, and the Pirates are pissed. Yeah, that's tough. Their players are calling out the fans after the game. You mean you demand me to spend all this money on a ticket, and the guy who I go to watch doesn't perform, I vocalize about it, and the players are mad? Go piss off. Every single one of you, go piss off. And that's live on recording. You can send that to Pittsburgh. Piss off. I have to admit, instead of Masters Week, I thought it was Open Week because that's like, ah, piss off. Not, you know, well, I didn't drop the C word on him. I didn't go full Brit. Mm -mm. The Open Championship. Uh, Leah Hextall looks like she should be lead singer in a goth band instead of a sideline reporter. Hey, at least they took her off play by play. Shimko, no, we had a softball game last night from 7.15 till 8.45. That was my night. I missed the first two periods of the Red Wings caps. All right, here we go. Okay. On a Wednesday. You are listening to Miller and Moulton, exclusively on the Florida Sports Network. And now, here's Mark Miller and David Moulton. Top of the morning to you on this hump day. Hope your week is going well. Let's get over it together, shall we? How the heck are you, Miller and Moulton? MillerandMoulton.com. Miller underscore Moulton on X. Top of the morning to you, Mark. How are you? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. Had a good night last night. I mean, typical night in the Miller household. If we're not out at a sporting event for the daughter, what would the night be? But I got a little angry last night at my daughter's softball game. Why is that? Because I had told the story on air that uh, I did stretching with my daughter and injured myself doing so. And so the coach, great guy, listens to the show. Mm -hmm. And he comes over, I don't know, Mid first, mid second. Who, who can tell in these games, David? They're so riveting. And says to me, Hey, just want to know if you wanted to lead the team in stretches after the game. And that's all fine and well, the joke. But he goes, Hey, Mr. Miller. Oh, oh, hey, now. Hey, your daughter's the same age as my daughter. Yeah. This Mr. Miller, I know I'm the old dad and all, but this Mr. Miller crap's got to go. Come on now. Come on now, that's not a sign of respect. No. No, that's a sign of you're an old fart. You got that right. Right. Uh-huh. How old is the coach again? I mean, it's one thing. It's not like he's, you know, a 16-year-old calling you Mr. Miller. That's a exactly. sign of respect. Come on now, sir. Unbelievable. By the way, and he's a he's a collegiate referee. Now I want to follow him to some Sunbelt game and start heckling him. Right. Hey, Stripes. Missed that one, didn't you? You know what P.I. is? It's okay to wear your glasses when you work. Yeah. See how witty our repartee is. So like to lead the team in stretches. Mr. Miller. Yeah. Unbelievable. 
tell you. This could be the first coach that you uh, you chime in on. You're the one that sits there in the stands and all the parents say, hey, sports guy, why don't you chime in? No. Everything looks fine to me. All right. Clock's still running, right? I mean, we're getting out of here. You know, I, I got a third period of the wings and the caps to catch. So let's just keep this thing moving. Uh, you know what? It, it was good to hear from you via text last night. I went to bed early. I, I was asleep by 10 last night, you know, late night, Monday night, and what have you. And so I, I tried to catch up last night. But uh, how about you getting all upset that the team you grew up rooting for in hockey lost? That's yeah. good. I was I was ticked last night because they gave a solid effort. They played well. There's one thing when your team lays down and pulls the Philadelphia Flyers and Tortorella gets up on the podium there and just chastises every player on his team. They actually played well. They got beat by a better goaltender. You got to tip your cap to the right. Caps. But I was genuinely ticked because that very well may cost my team their opportunity to make the playoffs. They've got games left. They've got chances, but that was a big one. It was a head-to-head matchup against two teams that are vying for one of the final playoff spots, and the Wings took it on the chin as Alex Ovechkin notches another goal, and the Caps get the win. Yeah, it's funny how, uh, let's see, uh, Ovechkin scored last night. Stamco scored uh, three times. McKinnon scored two, three times, didn't he? It, it, it's funny. Austin Matthews scored last night. It, it's interesting. It's It must be late in the season. All right. The boys, the boys must be uh, playing hard. Okay. And it's funny how the cream is once again rising. They're like, oh, yeah, it's April. Oh, I know what's next. The playoffs. I got to get it in gear. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But that's good. That's good, Mr. Miller, even at your advanced age, that you can still get honked off when when your childhood team loses a big game. That's good. I think that's very healthy. Most wouldn't, but on this show, we find that to be very healthy. Yes. That to me says that, you know, you're still, you know, you're still going. You know, you're you're still you're still in the game. You There's haven't no shut doubt. it down. Right? Nope. You know, that's good. That's good to know. When when you're on the, you know, 12th tee and the, the Wings lost a big game the night before and somebody's talking to you about it and you go, ah, whatever. That's, ooh, uh-oh, we need an intervention. You know, we may have to get some, you know, medical care and, and what have you. Yeah. So that's good. I, I'm glad. Does that mean, by the way, Trent is going to be useless today because another one of his Detroit teams lost a big game? Or is it, or is the Tigers four run ninth in a come from behind win going to get him through? No, I finally found out one thing I don't like about Trent. It's very it's hard to do. I mean, he's been here a while. He is one of the more likable people I've ever met. And I know that, that in and of itself can make you not like him. Right. But he doesn't have the Red Wing bug. He it, he's not a hockey guy. Okay. So I don't think he really gives a damn. All right. The Red Wings won. Or, I mean, I think he'd prefer that they win, but in the grand scheme of things, a so, Red Wings win or loss doesn't affect you a whole hell of a lot, does it, Trent? I slept okay. Yeah. Okay. So, in other words, he's you with the Lions. You know, you, you're okay if the Lions, you know, you didn't really get the gene. Okay. You got it with the other three teams. I got it. I hear you. You know, I think we all, like, I grew up rooting for, uh, you know, I grew up rooting for New York sports teams, and so there's four of them. And th- there's one that I care for more than the others, and there's one I care for a little less than the others. You know, I can sleep after a Knicks loss. A tough Knicks loss, eh, I can I can sleep okay. You know, Giants, Mets, Rangers, Mets and Rangers especially, yeah, that's, that's a – takes me a little while to get to sleep, even at my advanced age. You know, Mister Mr. with a capital, Moulton. capital right. Mister Moulton, right? Mm-hmm. Plus, the other thing is, you have hardly any gray hair showing. I, I have like five black hairs showing. I mean, I understand if I get called Mister Moulton, but you, you still look good. Not only that, you play golf, you're tan, hardly any gray in your mid fifties. I mean, you look good. Thank you, I appreciate that. Me, I look like I'm in a Thomas Jefferson reenactment. You know, I, the only thing I'm missing are the wigs. 
I mean, you know. Yeah, that would have been tough in those wigs. I run hot. That that there is no way that wig would have been comfortable. I'm with you. Not only that, everything was wool. Right. Man, it must have been brutal. Brutal. I could understand why not many people were moving to Florida back in the late 1700s. I can understand that. Man, oh, Carolina wool. must have been a bear in the summer. That's all. Oh I'm my saying. goodness. All that wool and the wigs with the humidity. Ah, I digress. All right. But, you know, a good solid sports night last night. Uh, the big story that everybody's going, you know, jumping up and down about is that the, the women kicked the men's butt. That's right, baby. Women's final, men's final, college basketball. Women had four million more people watching. They took the men out back and they just said, Taught them a lesson. First time that's ever happened. Yep. And it will take something seismic for it to ever happen again. Yeah, it will. I mean, Caitlin Clark is a phenomenon. It's great for the sport. And we'll see how much of it carries over, not just to the WNBA, but potentially her in the Olympics. And but also the next season of women's college basketball. But, you know, a little less than 19 million, shade under 15 million. Those were the final numbers. Men's ratings actually up. And if you think about that, last year's game was on CBS. This year's game was on TBS. And I know it was simulcast, a little TNT, True TV, you know, whatever. But it was actually up slightly compared to last year's UConn-San Diego State final. See what happens when you get two ones in the final? Correct. As opposed to a one and a five. Right. So. I was actually, there was part of me, David, that was hoping the men's rating would be down from last year so they would at least assess the 920 tip. Well, I'm with you. I'm with you. And there's no doubt. One was network. One was cable. One was on a Sunday. One was on a Monday night, you know, and then they can debate how much this whole 920 thing versus if they went 820, 830, 840. Yeah. Obviously, you know, Turner, CBS, and the NCAA, they'll kick it around. They will. Have to admit, there's no talk that CBS and Turner want to move the start time. None. Everybody else wants them to move the start time. But right now, there's no talk that CBS and Turner want to move the start time. Now, CBS is getting a new chairman in sports next week. This is Sean McManus's last week on the job. And beginning next week, David Burson will take over. Maybe David Burson will want to move the start time. We'll see. But... So good news for women's college hoops. Actually, positive news for the men in that tournament overall, up from the year before. Final, up from the year before. What is interesting to note, highest rated game in the tournament, the Elite Eight Duke-NC State game. That was the highest rated game in the tournament. When was it, by the way? Five to seven o'clock on a Sunday on CBS. On Easter. Correct. So imagine that. Hmm. Sunday on network television. And all of you want to know why. Why don't they move the Super Bowl to Saturday? That's why. There you go. And it shows that Duke without Coach K is still a major league brand. Monster draw. Monster. By the way, highest rated game of the first week of the tournament, Kentucky. Mm hmm. So, you know, some of the brands, eh, they, they're still they're still holding strong. You know, we like our brands in this country. We do. We like our, our events, our brands. You know, the Kentucky Derby people still watch it. You know. Three, four-hour show for two minutes of racing. Uh, you know, whatever. We're hooked. It's the hats, David. It's just the hats. It's got to be something, man. It really is. It's not like people are following the sport year-round. No. They don't even follow it three and five weeks later. Uh, 
They're not really. even following it at three o'clock on the day of the Derby, for goodness sakes. But so, so there you have it. Miller and Moulton. It is Masters Week. We're going to talk more about it coming up later in the show. The draft is nine days away. Or, excuse me, 16 days away. My bad. I'm too excited. We're going to talk more about that as well. Thanks for being with us on this hump day. We'll get over it together. Miller and Moulton. Mark Miller for Molly Made. Why Molly Made, you ask? Trust. Moulton was a customer for 15 years. Affordability. Didn't I just say Moulton was a customer for 15 years? Worry-free services. Our professional house cleaners are fully insured and a 24-hour warranty. Call Molly Maids today at 239-774-5839. That's 239-774-5839 or online at mollymade.com slash F-T-M-Y-E-R-S. That's mollymade.com slash F-T-M-Y-E-R-S. The law firm of Michael F. Hornung has successfully represented the citizens of Southwest Florida for over 30 years. As a former prosecutor, the information I know is information you need to know. If you've been arrested for a DUI, a criminal matter, or involved in an auto accident, call the law firm of Michael F. Hornung. I'm a local attorney with local knowledge to assist you through the process. For a free consultation, call 239-437-0095. That's 239-437-0095. Offices in Florida. Visit Jason and Todd. At the Diamond District. Are you ready for an event like no other? Join Jason and Todd at the Diamond District this weekend for their exclusive estate buying and selling event. It's time to dust off the old jewelry and dig out those fine timepieces you no longer wear. The Diamond District will pay top dollar for your unwanted treasures. Why let your valuable pieces gather dust when they could be putting cash in your pocket? That's not all. For those looking for exquisite jewelry at unbeatable prices, the Diamond District has you covered with a stunning selection of estate jewelry, meticulously curated and priced to sell. From dazzling diamonds and exotic gemstones to timeless Rolex watches, you'll find the perfect piece to elevate your style. Join the Diamond District this weekend for their estate buying and selling event, where they pay more for your jewelry and fine timepieces and sell for less. Don't miss out. Jason and Todd are in the store nearly every day and look forward to shaking your hand and welcoming you to their Diamond District family. At the Diamond District. We're listening to Miller and Moore on the Florida Sports Network. Sonny, Billy Donovan had a lengthy post-game presser yesterday in which he discussed at length how he's an NBA guy and that he thought himself as an NBA guy while he was in college. And he's not going anywhere. And he hasn't been contacted by Kentucky. And even if he was, he's not interested. I just want to know what do they do with if Scott Drew says no. Because to me, if you're going to do Bruce Pearl, you might as well do Patino. Thirty-five years later, if he returned, God Almighty, he talked about that. DC, he said, you know, there's this re- thing out there that I didn't like recruiting. He goes, actually, he goes, there's a part of it that I really liked. He goes, the part I didn't like is, is that unlike in sports, where you know you get something for finishing second or third, he goes, you got nothing in recruiting for finishing second. And he said that I never found, you know appealing but right. 
You know, I'm curious how different people would feel. People forget Billy Donovan's, was it his first or second year in Oklahoma City? They're up 3-1 in the conference finals on Golden State. And Russ and KD choked like dogs in game six at home. And lost that series in seven. The 70-whatever, 73-win uh, Golden State team. I thought uh, Hurley's quotes were hysterical in which he said, listen, I, I had a hard time. Mo- my His wife's from Jersey. <laughs> he said, I had a hard time getting her to go to Rhode Island. <laughs> he said, Connecticut's about as far away as I can get her from Jersey. <laughs> and he said, I can't afford a divorce right now. I'm just starting to make good money. <laughs> Sonny, I'm not kidding. This Kentucky team, with the way that region broke, with Duke taking out Houston in the Sweet 16, if Pacino was coaching this Kentucky team, they would have gone to the Final Four. They would have beat Oakland, NC State, a 14 and 11. I think they beat Marquette because Marquette couldn't score. And uh, and I think they beat this Duke team. All right, here we go. You're listening to Miller and Moulton, only on the Florida Sports Network. 21 minutes past the hour. Thanks so much for being with us. Miller and Moulton, millerandmoulton.com, Miller underscore Moulton on X. We'll begin our draft preview talk in a little more than an hour with the good folks at Pro Football Network. Seth Everett will join us today. Whit Watson in a couple hours to talk a little Masters. You know, I don't know if this happens to you, Mark, but sometimes we have a guest, whether it's David Sampson, Pat Kerwin, Gary Danielson, a name guest. People are listening and they say something on the show. And, well, it ends up like staying with me the rest of the day. And Pat Kerwin's little throwaway line near the end of our conversation yesterday. Oh boy. When he said, you know, the giants really like JJ McCarthy. I can see where that would stick with me for some time, David. Goodness sakes. Really? Ah, so now I got, you know, a few of my friends who watch us on Twitch. So now they're texting me. You know, then uh, people, you know, what would you think of the Giants drafted a quarterback? Uh, I just, come on, it's Tuesday. All right, I, I, I still two weeks uh, till the draft. I, I just, I need a break. I was up late last night. I just, come on now, don't do this to me. So it was, um, you know, I, I sent Pat a text in the middle of his show uh, thanking him for uh, ruining my day. Appreciate that. I said, and I, and I hope that a caller to your show does the same with you. Just leaves you with a comment and it just kind of festers for the rest of your Tuesday. You want the Giants to trade out of that pick, right? I mean, you want everybody to trade out of their pick early in the draft most of the time. But in particular, you want the Giants to trade out of this pick. I'm very torn. I, I have to be honest because... 
I'm a fan of a team that is not close. It's not close to close. All right. I'm a fan of a team that has a bottom 10 roster in the league. So when I see having the sixth overall pick of the draft, first off, I'd like to think that we're not going to be drafting that high in the near future. So therefore, let's maximize this pick. Well, Mark, how do you maximize a pick? You trade it. You do one of two things. You take a quarterback or you trade it. That's what you do. Now, the Giants pick may not be one that people want. You know, there may not be, you would think if you're going to trade up for a quarterback, you'll make a deal with Arizona or the Chargers at four and five, maybe even New England at three. So maybe there aren't going to be good offers for the pick. But then the other way to look at it is, hey, we're at six, we're close. How much more would it take for us to get our hands on a quarterback? Because, Mark, you know, I'm also a fan of a team who does not like who their quarterback is and who they've invested in a quarterback. I think they made a mistake. Thought they made a mistake when they drafted him. Thought they made a mistake when they re-signed him. And they're starting to realize they made the same mistake. Well, it certainly seems that way. So, yes, this could be a torturous process for me. When we do the draft, our draft show, two weeks from tomorrow night, it could be torturous for me. Is there a chance you could actually drink during this draft? Oh, I can assure you I'll be drinking. <laughs> I, I can absolutely guarantee it right now. So, because that's the other thing. And I have to admit, lately when it concerns drafts, you never go through a stretch where your team seems as if they're always one spot away. You know, this goes back a while now. The Knicks were a spot away from Steph. You know, the Giants have been a spot away from guys uh, recently. Uh, Don't you, like, if you're a Giants fan right now, let's just say the first five players are four quarterbacks and Marvin Harrison Jr. Well, what does that do for you? You're sixth. You know, I'd almost rather be nice. Five hours is nice. (laughs) Nah. I got so many tackles, needs. The tackle's nice. I could use one it, of those. I goodness knows. Yes. You know, it, it would be nice. Nothing wrong with Joe Alt. Nothing, nothing at all. Nothing. And you know nothing, what? Nothing, enough, by the way, nothing at all. If that were to happen and they get Joe Alt, that would not be a bad draft. No. No. Walk good. away with the best tackle in a tackle rich draft. Yeah. You know, I mean, of course, it, you ask a Giants fan, and, you know, two, three years ago, they took uh, Evan, you know, Neal from Alabama at seven, and then that's not turning out too well. I mean, you know, it's almost as if the guy who's drafting for the Jets is drafting for the Giants. So I, I just, you know how some fan bases are very excited about this draft. You know, a Bears fan, very excited about this draft. A Washington fan, very excited about this draft. You know, a Vikings fan, okay, a little nervous, but, uh, you know, hey, come on, two ones, we're in position to trade up, turn the page, you know, new era, get a quarterback, who, which one is it going to be, okay, you know, there's excitement there. I'm, I'm, I'm wanting to start drinking two weeks in advance. I have to challenge you on one thing you said there, though. I know I have now become friendly with a lot of Bears fans, and maybe because they're older, they're not the same. I haven't found one Bears fan, and I'm not joking around. Not one excited about this draft. I found dozens who go, oh, we're going to screw up another quarterback. (laughs) I I mean, their fan base is fractured, David. Curious, would they feel better if they signed a veteran to just, you know, do what New England did with Jacoby Brissett this year? Just sign a guy to take his lumps this year. Just go in there, do the best you can. All right, but, you know, we're not going to throw the rookie to the wolves. He's not ready. We're not ready. Although the Bears have done a much better job the last two years in upgrading that roster. They have. They they have. But they're still not there yet. But you know what? With a veteran quarterback who gave you a good year, you might be able to sneak in as a wild card. I, I could see the Bears 
putting together a, a winning season, you know, one of those nine and eight type seasons this year, nine, seven, and one. I could see that. I mean, their roster this year is better than the Giants roster was two years ago when they went nine, seven, and one. So, you know, it's possible. But there are fan bases that are excited about this draft. You know, Packers fan. I feel the team's young on the upswing, got all those picks, five of the first 91. You know, they can do something. That's exciting. And, you know, I, I kind of feel as if I'm the fan of a team that, I don't know, is either just going to be left holding the bag, knocking on the door, you know, hey, can I get into this party? No, sorry, man. All the cool kids are here. We don't have room for you. Oh, come on, man. I know Tony. Tony! Hey, Tony! I'm from Tony, New York. And Tony turns around and he he walks, you know, towards the kitchen. You know, he doesn't doesn't want to see you. Doesn't, doesn't even to... acknowledge you. No. And then, you know, later when you confront him, he goes, man, I didn't see you. I would have let you in. Sure, sure you would have, Tony. So that that's all. You know, you got trend in this draft. Not feeling very good about your team. Right. Not liking their draft positioning, not liking their options. So, yes, I'll be drinking the night of the draft. I will. Meanwhile, you got Trent, okay, who's got his feet up. He's smoking a cigar for the first time. Why? The draft's in his hometown, and his team's picking 29th, and he's just happy as a clam. I used to dream of this day. <laughs> <laughs> We're not picking in the top three. Nope. It feels so nice. Nope. You know, and then you got the, you know, the Jacksonville fans at 17, Miami at 21, Tampa Bay at 26. You know, they got their own thoughts. You know, so and so going to fall to us. We have to move up a couple spots to get the guy I really want. Okay. <sighs> J. J. McCarthy. Oh, my goodness. What Miller and Moulton. Why'd you do that to me? David can regroup because the starting five is next. Located on the East Trail, locally owned Naples Tiki Bar and Grill is an outdoor eatery next to the Hitching Post Shopping Center. Island-inspired food with a true tiki theme. The best place in Naples to enjoy the beautiful weather in Southwest Florida. The Naples Tiki Bar and Grill offers a great menu for dine-in or takeout. Enjoy our famous pulled pork, huge burgers, and tiki bar cocktails. Don't miss happy hour every day from 3 to 6 and live music 7 days a week. See you soon at the Naples Tiki Bar and Grill, 11498 Tamiami Trail East. Mark Miller for Molly Maid. Why Molly Maid, you ask? Trust. Molten was a customer for 15 years. Affordability. Didn't I just say Molten was a customer for 15 years? Worry-free services. Our professional house cleaners are fully insured and a 24-hour warranty. Call Molly Maids today at 239-774-5839. That's 239-774-5839 or online at mollymade.com slash F-T-M-Y-E-R-S. That's mollymade.com slash F-T-M-Y-E-R-S. Visit Jason and Todd at the Diamond District. Are you ready for an event? like no other join jason and todd at the diamond district this weekend for their exclusive estate buying and selling event it's time to dust off the old jewelry and dig out those fine time pieces you no longer wear the diamond district will pay top dollar for your unwanted treasures why let your valuable pieces gather dust when they could be putting cash in your pocket that's not all for those looking for exquisite jewelry at unbeatable prices the diamond district has you covered with a stunning selection of estate jewelry meticulously curated and priced to sell from dazzling diamonds and exotic gemstones to timeless rolex watches you'll find the perfect piece to elevate your style join the diamond district this weekend for their estate buying and selling event where they pay more for your jewelry and fine timepieces and sell for less don't miss out. Jason and Todd are in the store nearly every day and look forward to shaking your hand and welcoming you to their Diamond District family. At the Diamond District. You are listening to Miller and Moore on the Florida Sports Network. Yeah, that's really the only part of the equation nowadays. It's how much are you going to pay the transfer? You got to lure them away from the other, the other big fish. So, 
Sonny, it is a visa problem. Remember, he just got out of prison a few months ago. It is a visa problem. I thought Josh Allen was a year earlier. Uh, yeah, Daniel Jones was a draft after Josh Allen. Because Daniel Jones was a draft class with uh, Josh Allen's guy. Haskins, who went to Washington mid-round. Kyler Murray went first. The Lions picked Hawkinson in that draft, and I was so upset at the time. Really? Yeah. I wanted Josh Allen, like the the linebacker who went to the Jags seventh. And I thought for a second there, because at that time, the Jags, was it Minshew was their quarterback? I don't know. I thought they were going to pick Hawkinson. And I just didn't think. I don't know. He ended up being okay. I just he ended up being a good was, player. Yeah. And then I, they got a good Damn good replacement. Yeah, well, and a good pick for out of it. I mean, yeah, right. I just didn't think that position was worth where the Lions were picking, and I hated that GM Bob Quinn. Ugh. <laughs> Patriot way. It would be the Patriots. Yes, we are doing a live draft show for day one. Oh, the defense of Josh Allen. Yeah. Oh, tell me about it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's a good thing we were out in public. Because I had to behave. I just had to be stunned and angry and channel it all on the inside. Yeah, dirty hit. Shredded his knee. Hung out with the grandparents yesterday because they're heading out. And we watched... Wheel of Fortune and Jeopardy back to back. Oh, nothing yeah. says grandparents right. quite like Wheel of Fortune and Darn Jeopardy. Right, you did. And it was actually a really good time. Trent, we got to get you a date. <laughs> well, at least soon I'm going to have no options. I'm I'm sentimental about that. Okay, I do think when you leave home and you don't get to see your your relatives on a regular basis, you savor the the moments like that so I, I got your back but yes that girl from appleton has is she in town yet she is okay why don't you get together for the draft you can wear your jersey she can wear hers <laughs> okay maybe yeah. your team will trade in front of her team what would it take for you to wear a Packers jersey? Uh, nothing. I wouldn't do it. Packers in Michigan. I would like. I won't even make the bet of oh, if my team wins, you have to wear my team's jersey because I can't risk having to wear theirs. Okay. And I can't have that documented anywhere. Mm -hmm. Yep. Over my dead body. Yep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Here we go. In private, you would. You're listening to Miller and Moulton, only on the Florida Sports Network. And now, here's Mark Miller and David Moulton. 
22 minutes till the top of the hour. Thanks so much for being with us. Ian Cummings, an hour from now, Pro Football Network, we'll talk draft. Seth Everett in a little more than an hour. Whit Watson in a couple hours. Our Masters preview talk continues with Whit. Right now, we'll try to be witty with some repartee. And it's time for... The Starting Five. Five stories you need to know. It's The Starting Five on Miller & Moulton. Here's number one. Number one, the women are better than the men. At least in terms of the television ratings. First time ever, women's final. Out drew the men's. The women, just under 19 million, it turned out. They added 200,000 upon further review. The men, just under 15 million. Both tournaments' ratings were up from the previous year, obviously with the women, but also for the men. It was a good tournament. For the women, it was a great tournament. Uh, Some big coaching news yesterday. John Cow made it official, sent out a video and everything. So did his wife. The two of them actually in their 15 years in Lexington, the state of Kentucky, did a lot of charitable work and really dove into being, you know, the Mr. and Mrs., if you will, of the Commonwealth. You know, in many ways, they were a bigger deal than the governor and the first lady. So uh, they both sent out videos yesterday. So it's official. And John Cowell's going to be having a presser in Arkansas later in the week, baby. Woo! Pig Suey. Suey. But also, uh, big news late last night, Tara Vandeveer retiring from Stanford. Been there 38 years. She's 70 years old. Right now, there is not a male or female basketball coach who's ever won more games than Tara Vandeveer. 1,216. She passed Coach K for number one on the all-time list during the season. But Gino Oriema's within, like, Eight wins of her. So if Gino doesn't step away and he hinted that he's not going to be at this job much longer, there are a lot of people that believe that Gino's going to leave when Paige Beckers leaves after next year. But if that's the case, then Gino is likely going to post the win total that everyone else is going to shoot at. 14 final fours for Vandeveer, three titles one of five coaches in women's college basketball to have three or more national titles oriema summit moki vandeveer and now don staley nba heat big win they are going to uh, Avoid the 9-10 play-in now, it looks like. They beat Atlanta on the road in double OT, 117-111. Tyler Hero with 33. They're a half game behind the Sixers. So Miami's the 8 and Philly's the 7. Philly's won six in a row. They're 5-0 and oh since Embiid came back. They handled Detroit comfortably by 18 last night. Nobody wants to play the Sixers. Right now, they're the seven seed. They'd open with Milwaukee, who did beat Boston last night, 104-91. That's the good news. Snap the four-game skid. Also keeps them as the two seed, a game ahead of the Knicks. More on them in a moment. But Giannis hurt. Calf injury. They don't know the severity. This we need to pay attention to. This could be a big thing. It's Giannis, after all. He's a big thing. The Magic, by the way, the tough loss for them because they were a game out of the two seed and now they fell back to a tie for the four seed, losing in Houston 118-106. So they're tied with the Cavs, who they would meet in the first round of the playoffs if the playoffs started today. Out West, Minnesota, Denver, and OKC all won. So the T-Wolves and Nuggets are tied for the top spot. T-Wolves have the tiebreaker. OKC is a game back in third. OKC owns tiebreakers over just about everybody. Three games to play for all three teams. I mentioned the Knicks a moment ago. They beat Chicago in Chicago, 128-117. This Jalen Brunson, dude. I mean, this is a second-round pick. This was a complimentary player. 
And then his final year in Dallas, he had a really good playoff alongside Luka. Mavs could have re-signed him for like $20 million a year for four years, and they wouldn't offer him the deal. So then the Knicks got him for like $25 million, and everybody said, man, did they overpay for him? It's an undersized, slow point guard. Yeah, Mark, he's going to finish top five in the MVP voting. He hit 45 again last night. Anyway, the Knicks are the three seed right now in the East. Uh, Golden State hit. Hold on a second. They just hit another three. Did you, Mark, do you by chance, did you pay any attention to this game? Are you aware of what happened? Because I'm aware of what happened. It was, it was a late game, so I wasn't watching. But, yes. The Warriors hit 26 threes. Right. Holy. 26 threes. Even in the NBA, that's a lot. They beat the Lakers in L.A. by 14. They're a half a game back in the battle for who's going to have home court when they play each other in the 9-10 elimination game. NHL. Do you really want to play the Lightning? Anybody want to play the Lightning? No. No. What, what are they, 11-1-1 one now? I believe that's games? what it is. Something like that? Uh, Stamkos with a hat trick and an assist. Kucherov with three assists. I would vote Kucherov for MVP. I would. I'd vote him over McKinnon. I really would. I, I He carried that team for 60 games. Him and Braden Point. And now Stamkos and the reinforcements and what have you. But they would have been done. They would have been the Devils, the Sabres, if it wasn't for Kucherov. Uh, anyway, Stamkos with 39 goals, three in the third for the Lightning. They beat Columbus 5-2. Panthers with a 2-0 win over Ottawa. They're three points behind Boston with three to play because the Bruins lost at home to Carolina 4-1. Both the Bruins and Canes are three points behind the Rangers for the top seed in the East. The Islanders did them a favor because they beat the Rangers 4-2 last night. The Islanders right now are in third place. In the division, they're two points clear of the mess that is the battle for the final playoff spot in the East, which right now belongs to the Capitals. The Capitals 2 1 win over the Wings has them a point ahead of both the Wings and the Penguins, and two points ahead of the Flyers. Those four teams all battling for one playoff spot separated by two points. Can we call what the Flyers doing as battling? I mean, they lost to Columbus last night. Uh, well, they lost to Montreal, but they didn't Montreal, just Montreal, I'm sorry, yeah. They lost 9-3. I think it was 6 nothing at one point. I mean, are they really battling? No, they have absolutely collapsed. It's as if the team has no heart. A John Tortorella team with no heart. He is going to ship 14 guys out of town off that team. At the it's going to look year. like the St. John's basketball team. So many guys are going to get kicked off that <laughs> exactly. team. Exactly. The Philadelphia Flyers are going to be in the transfer portal. You're damn right they are. They're just not aware of it yet. Uh, Toronto beat New Jersey 5-2. Austin Matthews got a 66th goal. Uh, Winnipeg over Nashville in overtime, but the Preds point clinches a playoff spot. Uh, Dallas, by the way, with a win over Buffalo, all but eliminates the Sabres, and the Stars need just two points in their final three games to clinch the one seed out west. Nathan McKinnon with a hat trick. He's got 51. He's probably winning the heart, isn't he? Yes, I, I think that he is. Colorado 5-2 over the Wild. Uh, Kings missed a chance to clinch a playoff spot. They lost in Anaheim. Devils Jack Hughes season-ending shoulder surgery. Seth will be in mourning when he joins us in a little more than an hour. Baseball, uh, Jose Caballero, the new shortstop for the Rays. Uh, good night, three hits, two RBIs. He did commit a costly error, however, cost him a run. But the Rays beat Mike Trout and the Angels 6-4. Trout with another home run, a two-run shot. That's his sixth. Hey, the Yankees are 10-2, and two and they're playing the Marlins, so that means they are 1-11. Yankees 3-2 over Miami, who were held to four hits and committed two errors, which cost them two runs. Uh, Braves jumped out to a 6-0 lead 
and held off the Mets 6-5. Tigers with four in the ninth beat the Pirates 5-3. Uh, it was a big festive day in Boston, home opener for the Red Sox, the 20th anniversary of the 014, which broke the curse. They honored the Wakefields, Tim and Stacy, who both have tragically passed due to cancer in the last five months. And then they mustered just two hits and lost to the Orioles 7-1. Milwaukee beat the Reds 9-5. White Sox picked up their second win of the year, 7-5 over Cleveland. Dodgers double up the Twins 6-3. Arizona snaps a five-game skid. They beat Colorado 3-2. Cubs, after losing and blowing an 8-0 lead the night before, showed the old axiom is true. Momentum in baseball is next day's starting pitcher. Cubs beat the Padres 5-1. Uh, Cardinals 3-0 over the Phils. The Sonny Gray's first start in St. Louis was five shutout innings. The Giants are 4-8. and eight. They lost to the Nats 5-3. And Oakland got three homers from Shea Longolares, including a two-run shot in the ninth to beat Texas 4-3. Kansas City beat Houston 4-3. They've won five in a row. And Toronto 5-3 over Seattle. The Mariners, Astros, Giants all off to 4-8 and eight starts. Other baseball news, Trevor Story out for the year for the Red Sox. Diving catch, landed on his left shoulder, busted it all up. He's done, just like that. Uh, Jose Urias used to be with the Dodgers. They released him after he got arrested for domestic violence. Officially charged with five misdemeanors yesterday. And Baltimore is going to call up the number one prospect in all of baseball. Matt Holiday's kid, Jackson Holiday, will be at Fenway today for the Orioles against the Red Sox. Champions dinner last night at Augusta. John Rahm, it was spicy, but apparently everybody did okay. By the way, uh, Scotty Scheffler and um, uh, Sam Burns, their wives are both very pregnant. Burns' wife is due next week. Scheffler's wife's due at the end of the month. They're both on record as saying, yeah, they go into labor, we're done. You know, lead on the back nine on Sunday, the whole deal, we're out of here. The good news is there's no phones on the course at Augusta, so I don't know if they can get word to anybody. And I got to be honest, if you've got the lead on the back nine on Sunday, I mean, come on, that's less than two hours. I mean, yeah, I know the whole green jacket ceremony and what have you. I, three hours? Uh, three hours. Might miss the ceremony. Might say, hey, guys, sorry, I won. Got to complain. Go. My wife's my having a baby. My caddy will step in for me. You know, right. Recite what we did on the back nine, okay? You know, tell the joke on the 12th tee. You know, whatever. But I got to go. So that was like Phil. Remember 25 years ago, the U.S. Open at Pinehurst? Amy was very pregnant. You know, Phil walked around with the beeper. Remember the beepers? Walked around with a beeper in case she went into labor. Trent, since you didn't have a clue what a fax machine was a few months back, you do know what a beeper is, right? Um, I'm assuming it's some sort of alert system. Pager? You're not aware of this device. I, I know what it is. Never had to use one, never seen one. <laughs> I don't know what you want me to tell you. No, you've told me exactly no, what no, you. No, I just. I asked your question. I wanted the yeah. honest answer. I got it. No, we were, you know, Mr. Miller kind of knew where the answer was going to be. Damn right. Mr. Moulton knew where it was going as well. Yesterday it was the love boat. Never heard of it. You know, last week it was, you know. Uh, yep. And that at eight minutes before the hour was. That was the starting five every weekday morning at this time on Miller and Moulton. So there you go. By the way, the Orioles calling up their top prospect. They did it one day early so that he can get his full year of service. And that's usually not the case. That's right. And if he wins rookie of the year, they get an extra first round draft pick by calling him up early. So there was actually an incentive for them to do it. And I think the Orioles have had the last two rookies of the year, so they could have three in a row. So there we go. Their process worked. It's working. It really is. Well, they drafted the right guys. Yes. Everybody's process works when you draft the right guys. We can all have a process. You draft the wrong guys. Eh, you know what you have? You have a mess. 
not a process. You have a mess. So, good show lined up. Talk a little NFL draft next hour. Talk with Seth and talk some Masters in our 8 o'clock hour. You know, getting over the hump together. Masters week gets underway tomorrow. Hope things are going well for you. Thanks for spending your Wednesday morning with us, Miller and Moulton. Visit Jason and Todd at the Diamond District. Are you ready for an event like no other? Join Jason and Todd at the Diamond District this weekend for their exclusive estate buying and selling event. It's time to dust off the old jewelry and dig out those fine timepieces you no longer wear. The Diamond District will pay top dollar for your unwanted treasures. Why let your valuable pieces gather dust when they could be putting cash in your pocket? That's not all. For those looking for exquisite jewelry at unbeatable prices, the Diamond District has you covered with a stunning selection of estate jewelry, meticulously curated and priced to sell. From dazzling diamonds and exotic gemstones to timeless Rolex watches. You'll find the perfect piece to elevate your style. Join the Diamond District this weekend for their estate buying and selling event, where they pay more for your jewelry and fine timepieces and sell for less. Don't miss out. Jason and Todd are in the store nearly every day and look forward to shaking your hand and welcoming you to their Diamond District family. At the Diamond District. Hello, friends and family of Southwest Florida. Are you looking to tap into the electric vehicle market? Well, look no further because we here at Southwest Florida Golf Carts have just what you need. E-bikes, golf carts, LSVs, scooters, and more. Come down and talk with one of our experienced sales reps, have a soda and a smile, and you could be cruising the streets in your new EV today. Stop by the store or visit our website at flgolfcarts.com and enter for a chance to win $100 off your next purchase by answering John's monthly sports question. The law firm of Michael F. Hornung specializes in criminal defense, DUI, personal injury, nursing home claims, and auto accidents. I'm a former prosecutor with over 34 years of experience. The information I know is information you need to know. If you've been arrested for a DUI, time is of the essence to maintain your driving privileges. Call the law firm of Michael F. Hornung for a free consultation. At the law firm of Michael F. Hornung, we are committed to excellence in your representation. Being a local attorney with local knowledge is clutch to the success of your case. For over 30 years, we have successfully represented the citizens of Southwest Florida. For a free consultation, call 239-437-0095. That's 239-437-0095. Our offices are conveniently located in Fort Myers. Visit online at mfh-law.com. Mark Miller for Molly Maine. Why Molly made, you ask? Trust. Molten was a customer for 15 years. Affordability. Didn't I just say Molten was a customer for 15 years? Worry-free services. Our professional house cleaners are fully insured and a 24-hour warranty. Call Molly Maids today at 239-774-5839. That's 239-774-5839 or online at mollymade.com slash F-T-M-Y-E-R-S. That's mollymade.com slash F-T-M-Y-E-R-S. We're listening to Miller and Moore on the Florida Sports Network. By the way, we're it was like an hour ago now. Max said he was having a beer in uh, David, I, never, I, I couldn't I couldn't even pronounce it. I never heard of the country that he's in. Me either. I do want to let you know, David, that today, uh, this isn't part of today, it's day one, but I just love this stat. Today in 1979, J.R. Richard of the Astros completes a, a pitches a complete game, but sets an MLB record throwing six wild pitches and a 2-1 win over the Dodgers. He was, I remember J.R. Richard, man. Oh, yeah. That was... That was insane. Him and Nolan Ryan on the same staff. And Joaquin Andahar for a little bit too, right? Yeah. Uh, I think Joaquin was with the Cardinals then. Okay, yeah. He never pitched with Ryan. You're right. I could be wrong. All right. Ash Kabat. Capital City. 
of Turkmenistan. Mm-hmm. Uh, three in the afternoon, which means it's a nine-hour time difference. Turkmenistan. I've got to look this up. <sighs> it's in Central Asia. Yeah, I got it. Bordered, bordering Kazakhstan wow. and Uzbekistan. And Iran and Afghanistan. Population 6.4 million. Golly. I think if I was in Turkmenistan, I'd have a beer at three in the afternoon, too. Wow. Mac, I hope you're good. Golly. And I wish I could fix this right hand. Really bother me. <sighs> Absolutely, EB. Here we go. Listening to Miller and Moulton exclusively on the Florida Sports Network. And now here's Mark Miller and David Moulton. Hour two of Miller and Moulton on this hump day. We're getting over it together. Hope your week's gone well to this point. And we hope it gets even better. Miller and Moulton, MillerandMoulton.com, Miller underscore Moulton on X. Ian Cummings, Pro Football Network. We'll talk a little draft. In about 35 minutes' time. Hey, Mark, you know, sometimes the big picture gets lost in the immediacy of things. Because I saw something this morning in which there have only been eight Division I men's basketball coaches who have accomplished what I'm about to lay out for you which is 15 or more years at the same school. And during those 15 years, they went to at least four Final Fours, won at least one Natty, and had a winning percentage at that school of 750 or higher. Now, Roy Williams, if you round up, makes the list. He's not on the list, but his winning percentage at North Carolina was 748. I would put him on the list, but this is strictly. Well, I'm impressed that you'd put him on the list as tough as you have a grader as you are with that New Jersey grading system. I know, but you know, you're rounding up. So no, I got you. I mean, come on. If you're doing play by play of the game. Okay. And you're doing your scorebook and you see that the guy's a 748 free throw shooter. What do you say? Shade under 75%. Okay. And I say it's I... a 75% free throw shooter. I literally would, I, and I, I, I'm not. I'm not even okay. being funny. All right, and it I would, would have put 75 it, with an arrow down. Interesting, so and I would know. just put 75. percent So you're actually tougher than I am. Okay, at least when it concerns sports stats, not grades. 
Okay. No, You're, no, no. Give everybody an A. <laughs> uh, and this who's who, remember, 15 or more years at the same school, Division One men's, 750 winning percentage, four Final Fours, and it, a natty, minimum. All right? Adolph Rupp, Mike Krzyzewski, Lute Olson, Bill Self, Dean Smith, Jerry Tarkanian, John Wooden, John Calipari, with Roy Williams, nine with an asterisk, because he's 748 winning percentage, but went to four Final Fours, won two natties at North Carolina, you know, blah, blah, blah. So there you have it. Now, obviously, if you had said to the Kentucky fans 15 years ago, after Billy Gillespie, hey, if you're going to get 15 years out of John Cal, here's what you're going to get. They would have, you know, oh, thank, thank goodness. But Mark, the last, last five years, uh, hmm. Not a lot of tournament success. No SEC no. tournament success. No tournament tournament success. No, and come on now. The sports completely changed while John Cal was there. The transfer portal being what it is has monumentally changed college basketball the way we know it. Mm -hmm. He was getting away with the one and dones before the portal became what it is. Mm -hmm. And... While that list is unbelievably impressive, right? I mean, that's a hell of a list. If your name's on that list, you're no, like, that, that, "Damn, that's I was a list. Good. I was pretty good." And meanwhile, they are basically, basically forcing them out of town. They're not running them out of town, but the moving vans are parked across the street. Right? I mean, they're giving him his space, but they're in view. Hey, we're here if you need us. You thinking about leaving? We're we're right here. No, no, no. We're not saying you got to leave. But if you're thinking about it, we're here if you need us. David, you can only stay married for the kids for so long. <laughs> Apparently so. Kids are old enough. They're looking you right in the eye going, why are you two doing this? Right. We'd be better off if you were apart. Yeah. We, listen, we've come to the conclusion you guys should have divorced two, three years ago. What are you waiting for? So it's very interesting. That's, that's a nice list to be on. Okay. And, and we'll be sure to be careful with the furniture. We won't scratch it. We won't tend it. Okay. Don't worry. All right. Fayetteville, right? Is that where we're going? Okay. Got it. Yep. No problem. So whether it's Scott Drew or whoever it's going to be, you know, you know, there's going to be a honeymoon because they're so happy to get rid of this guy. But, you know, this guy wasn't bad. And trust me, David, when I say this, and I know you know this to be true. We could be two years removed from this, and they could be begging to have John Kell back at, UK at Kentucky. I actually think, though, in his goodbye video yesterday, some of what he said I think was 100% accurate. He didn't go to the end of the diving board, but he was getting there. I mean, he said, I just think, you know, you guys want a new voice. Uh, yeah. Yes. They're tired of seeing your face. They're tired of hearing your voice. They're tired of what it is you have to say. They don't want to hear you try to rationalize anything. They will acknowledge all the nice work you've done for charity. But as a coach, we are done with you. Get out of here. I'll be curious, though, that what it will be like when he comes back in conference play. I mean, you would like to think that, okay, uh, you know, you stayed a little longer than we probably wanted. But, you know, hey, you'd like to think that it wouldn't be nasty when he returns. You'd like to think that they'd, you know... Say, you know, hey, thanks for what you did, and thanks for leaving, and thanks for making us not have to pay you $33 million to leave. 
totally agree with you. Unless the roster has four transfers and three freshmen and they go into Lexington and just pound them. Well, I, I will say uh, one of the kids who was coming to Kentucky is already decommitted. And uh, one of the freshmen who was on Kentucky has already said he's leaving. So, uh, you know, maybe we'll see where some of these guys end up. Uh, that's all. I'm just hoping that the first time at Rupp that, you know, they, they just, they're appreciative at the beginning. Then they just, you know, hostile for the next two hours. But my hope is that when they announce and the head coach of Arkansas, John Calipari, hey, come on now. He didn't suck. <laughs> uh, you know, all in all, I mean, he's on the same list as, you know, you're in Rupp Arena. He's on the same list as the guy you put on the arena. I mean, come on. You've won four natties in 65 years. He got you one of them. How angry can you be? No? No, I think you're right. David, I think they'll give him a, a nice 15-foot birdie putt uphill clap. Oh, I don't think so at all. I don't think so at all. I think it'll sound like the visiting team in the Ryder Cup when the guy makes birdie and then he kind of looks at the crowd and puts his hand to his ear. Oh, no, I think it, I think it will be hostile. Oh, you think they'll boo him when he comes back to run? I think it'll be hostile. I do. I think they'll cheer. Okay. I think what you said will happen. They will cheer when they announce his name, then they will hate him for two hours. I hope so. I do, but, but it's just funny how, you know, and yeah, you can say he accomplished most of what he accomplished in his first six years. He did, you know, 2010 through 2015. I mean, that was, you know, that's when they were, whew, they were rolling. I mean, they really have not been the same. They were 38 no in the final four and Wisconsin beat them. I mean, you know, he had it going. Going, they went to like four out of six Final Fours. I mean, won a natty, and they're about to win another one. And he's sending guys to the NBA like crazy. And then it it just kind of you know, it, it's all of a sudden you're on the treadmill at the airport. You're like, hey, can I get to my gate? What? But Hurley, Billy Donovan, and I guess Jay Wright hasn't come out yet and said he's not interested. Oh but... no, he said it on the set. Yeah, he said. Uh, yeah, he, he, oh yeah, he said it on the set. He said no. No, no, no. So the big three have all said no. No. And in quick fashion. And, uh, you know, the what's his fit? Nate Oates sent out a thing Monday night also saying, nope, not in, I'm Alabama, not interested. Okay. Listen, right now it's Scott Drew. And if Scott Drew turns it down, then this gets fun. No, this does. This gets fun if Scott Drew turns it down. I don't think he will. But I think this is fun because now you start go and once you get to Bruce Pearl, who can't you call? Seriously. You know what I'm getting at. Once you get the Bruce Pearl, who's next on the call sheet? Come on, say it. Who's next? If Scott Drew says no, the next guy on the list is Bruce Pearl, but we have to have somebody else on hold. Who's next? Say it. I, I don't see it happening. Say it. Come up with somebody else except him. Honestly, give me somebody. It's Rick Patino, and you know it. Shaka smart. <laughs> right. Right. Underachieving at Texas and Marquette, and you want to give him the Kentucky job. Right. Okay. Sure. Matt Painter. Matt Painter. I like it. That's, that's, you know what? That's a good phone call. I He'll say no in a minute and a half, but that's a good phone call. You know, would you call Mark Few? Yes. A little older than you'd like, but... Would you call Mark Few? Yes. Okay. 
I like it. You guys are coming up with good names here. I'll just sit in the back. I got my sign in the air. I'm not even going to say a word. It just says Patino on it. <laughs> okay. I'm not going to say a word. <laughs> you guys conduct your search. I'm just in the corner here. Let me know when you need me. I got his number. I don't see it happening. I understand, but I'm just saying if the Baylor guy says no, uh, now we're in a different area code. You got to admit, we are. Miller and Moulton. Play of the day is coming up. Law firm of Michael F. Hornung specializes in criminal defense, DUI, personal injury, nursing home claims, and auto accidents. I'm a former prosecutor with over 34 years of experience. The information I know is information you need to know. If you've been arrested for a DUI, time is of the essence to maintain your driving privileges. Call the law firm of Michael F. Hornung for a free consultation. At the law firm of Michael F. Hornung, we are committed to excellence in your representation. Being a local attorney with local knowledge is clutch to the success of your case. For over 30 years, we have successfully represented the citizens of Southwest Florida. For a free consultation, call 239-437-0095. That's 239-437-0095. Our offices are conveniently located in Fort Myers. Visit online at mfh-law.com. Mark Miller for Molly Maid. Why Molly Maid, you ask? Trust. Molten was a customer for 15 years. Affordability. Didn't I just say Molten was a customer for 15 years? Worry-free services. Our professional house cleaners are fully insured and a 24-hour warranty. Call Molly Maids today at 239-774-5839. That's 239-774-5839 or online at mollymade.com slash F-T-M-Y-E-R-S. That's mollymade.com slash F-T-M-Y-E-R-S. Hello, friends and family of Southwest Florida. Are you looking to tap into the electric vehicle market? Well, look no further because we here at Southwest Florida Golf Carts have just what you need. E-bikes, golf carts, LSVs, scooters, and more. Come down and talk with one of our experienced sales reps, have a soda and a smile, and you could be cruising the streets in your new EV today. Stop by the store or visit our website at flgolfcarts.com and enter for a chance to win $100 off your next purchase by answering John's monthly sports question. We're listening to Miller and Moulton on the Florida Sports Network. Trent. Trent didn't have his microphone muted. And I mistakenly blamed David because it was a technology issue and I went after the wrong guy. What's up? Nothing. Oh, I, thought I blamed you that. for something that oh. was Trent's fault. Gotcha. What was going on? There was a Trent didn't have his microphone muted, and it was when I put the on stage, it started screeching. Gotcha. Oh, sorry and about I, that. And I thought it was David's fault because it was a technology issue. So I blamed <laughs> Moulton. 
And here's the thing, and I'm such a moron when it comes to technology that I would accept the blame even if it wasn't my fault. I'd be like, sorry about that, Mark. I went, come on, Molten. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, uh, you're a jerk. It was funny when there was that ad playing on the computer or whatever it was, and you go, is that you? And I'm like, no. And Pat goes, come on, Trent. You don't always take responsibility. <laughs> right. That was, too, that was way too quick of a no. Mac, how do they like Americans in wherever in uh, Turkmenistan? Turkmenistan? Or do you have to wear a Canadian hat? The capital of Turkmenistan is Ashgabat. Gazute. Right. You're making this up. This is No. No, we looked it up. No, we looked it up. Because he went in the Twitch chat room right at the top of the show. He says he's listening to us while having a beer in the capital of Turkmenistan. Between he and uh, Pleasant Journeys that follows us, too. Has, has, right. They have watched this show. From all parts of the world. Yes. So today is National Grilled Cheese Day. Huh. Does anybody not like grilled cheese? Like, could we do a poll question about, you know, thumbs up, thumbs down? Or do, no. does anybody not like grilled cheese? If you don't like grilled cheese, you're, I don't know if you're really American. Do you ask what kind of cheese on your grilled cheese? Should uh, that truth, be our question? Truth, no. Velveeta. Ooh. <laughs> that could have gone one of two Very ways. Very melty. I, I thought you were going to rip me. For when that. I was a kid, I loved a Velveeta grilled cheese. My grandma puts a little bit of mustard on the inside, and then the cheese. That's very good. Just a little, just a little, not, not a ton. It's good. Try it. You guys would probably both like it knowing how much you love mustard. He, he sounds at this moment in time, like he's about to call us Mr. And Mr. <laughs> Miller and Malton, doesn't he? Uh, I mean, <laughs> Mr. Miller, I put mustard on the inside of my girl's shoes. You're listening to Miller and Moulton, only on the Florida Sports Network. 21 minutes past the hour. There's a lot going on with this show today. I don't know about during the show, but in and around the show, there's a lot going on today. Ian Cummings, Pro Football Network. We'll talk draft in about 15 minutes. Seth Everett with Watson. All right, we've got a good rest of the show lined up. We just need to just take care of a few things right now. So there's this guy named Mac. All right. He lives in the Tampa area, but he's a business guy. He travels the world. He has, he likes the show. He found us and he follows us. So this morning he said, I'm having a beer listening to you guys in Turkmenistan. That's a country for those it of you that were wondering. It is. He's in the capital of Turkmenistan. Ashgabat. A-S-H-G-A. I'm glad you said that correctly because I was afraid it was an FCC violation. Ashgabat. A-S-H-G-A-B-A-T. The capital of Turkmenistan. And it's a country of six and a half million people. And uh, he's listening to the show. Apparently we're blaring in the streets of Turkmenistan. And Max having a beer. And he says they love Americans there and one of the friendliest places in his world travels. Okay, Mac, thanks for checking in. Be safe, be well. We'll, we'll talk soon. We've also, we've not been very good the last couple of days. The shows maybe have been fine, but we didn't have a, we barely got a poll question up yesterday, which was, is Tiger going to make the cut at the Masters? Right. And we got it up very late in the show. That was embarrassing. It's Masters Week. I mean, seriously? We like we couldn't have come up with that question at 601. 
I mean, how embarrassing is that? Today, here we are, nearly an hour and a half from the show. We don't have a poll question. Haven't even discussed one. And then Chef we found out of the field. <laughs> Wait, I'm sorry, Scheffler of the field? Yeah. Yeah. So uh, we could, by the way, ask the poll question, you know, S Scotty Scheffler and Sam Burns' wives are pr very pregnant. Okay, that's as opposed to pregnant. All right. If they go into labor on Sunday, do you withdraw from the tournament? Yes or no? Much to my shock, and I do mean shock. So wife and I are dating. We're engaged. I'm in Fargo. And there was a question. I think it was Cal Ripken's streak. And it was, hey, if your wife's pregnant and she goes into labor, do you miss the game and end the streak? Because your wife goes into labor. And I'm like, well, yeah, you have to. And I, a lot of pushback, okay? And I said, you know, my future wife would kill me. So it's we called her. She was living in upstate New York at the time. We called her. We're engaged. And I said, okay, here's the scenario. You know, do I have to, you know, do I got to leave? I got to go. This is life. It's not just a consecutive game streak. And she was like, no, you could play the game and then, you know, come by afterwards and, you know, hopefully you're there for the birth. I was shocked. Stunned. I am. Right. Now, I don't know, you know, since then, obviously, we got married, had a kid. I don't know if she would feel differently now. I don't know now is if she'd say, if you didn't leave when you get here, I'm going to stab you in the neck, you know. So we could ask that as a poll question. If you have the lead on Sunday at Augusta and your wife goes into labor, because they've both said, hey, man, she goes into labor, we gone. Yeah, Sam, you don't have to worry about it. It's cute. It's a nice story. But you're not winning the Masters. Now, come on now. Danny Willett won the damn thing. I mean, stuff happens. Sam Burns is not winning the Masters. <laughs> Just whatever you do, don't put it in print. I'll okay. put it in print. I did that 13 years ago with a guy named Charles Schwartzel. He I know. It didn't work out the Masters. Did you? It was Dewey defeats Truman for me. Sam Burns has one top 25 finish in 14 majors. He's not winning the Masters. I it, The odds are that he's not, but I'm just saying. I, so, I got you. But okay. Scheffler's a real story because he's going to win the Masters. Okay. So, well, that, unless his wife goes into labor because apparently he's leaving. So that could be a poll question. The other one is apparently it's National Grilled Cheese Day. And we could ask what cheese... Do you put on your grilled cheese? And Trent, well, we, know what, record, we, know what, we know what cheese you put on it. Well, I put American. Of course. Yeah. Well, don't say it in a denigrating way. It's, it's I mean, well, Trent. Not a, admittedly, not a fancy cheese guy, he says. He likes either American or cheddar. No, I, yeah. No, he likes American or American. For, for the most I, part. I've watched it. He, I mean, I'll tolerate cheddar, but I like American or American. I do. Okay. If it's not processed, it's not for David. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's either white or orange American, but it's got to be American. Right. So, I, but I mean, Trent nominated Velveeta. You're making fun of me. He said Velveeta. It's delicious. <laughs> it's very good. Very melty. It's very melty. That was exactly what it's very. When I was a kid, a Velveeta grilled cheese was a treat. Because when I was a kid, I had grilled cheeses the way you do, David, with American cheese. Now, I haven't had American cheese in my house in. I, I couldn't tell you the last time there was a slice of American cheese in my house. Wow. Wow. And, and there is a drawer Traitor. in the refrigerator full of cheese right now. There's some goat. There's some brie. There's some Swiss. There's some Colby Jack. You have yes, a goat actually. in your closet? Yes, a small <laughs> goat. Packaged in everything. All right. So I don't know. You know, the problem is people come up with all these cheeses and we only have room for four answers. Right. But I, I just, I don't. So you you choose. You want to do the, the Scheffler wife goes into labor, back nine at Augusta, do you leave? Uh, you know, or do you? How about this? Why don't we ever just do two poll questions? What's wrong with that? Uh, if people don't want to vote. They just don't vote. Move we on. try not to. Sh there are shows that once, the if you do more than one poll question, you usually end up doing six. 
Okay, and we we have enough. It's hard enough for us to come up with one decent question, so we try <laughs> to stop there. So we just bank them. We could ask the Scheffler question tomorrow. Let's do grilled cheese today because it's topical. All right, you guys got to come up. You with put four mustard choices. on your damn grilled cheese. <laughs> All right, I'm still trying to get through. I ignored it. I tried to leave it alone, but since you're pressing the grilled cheese envelope right now, you literally put mustard on a grilled cheese sandwich. What it's, the hell is the matter with you? It was, I and I love mustard. It's just how my grandma prepared it. And you know, I look, I was raised at the tail end of that generation that still has respect for, you know, their grandparents when they cook food for them. So I was not picky about it. I ate it and I liked it the way it was. That's how I know grilled cheese. All right. Just a little bit of mustard, little. Okay. And then a ton of Velveeta cheese. A ton. With so his Velveeta, he wants a little Grey Poupon. <laughs> Slice it up. It's a grilled, we're not talking about a grilled cheese and tomato. We're not talking about a ham and cheese. We're talking about a grilled cheese sandwich, which has bread and cheese. That's it. Time now for the play of the day, Trent. What do you got? Well, the Miami Heat picked up a nice win in double OT. So shout out to them. But the Kansas City Royals are on an absolute roll. Uh, they're hosting the Astros last night, headed to extras at 3-3. Three to three. And in the bottom of the 10th, Salvi Perez put the captain hat on. Suero delivers. Salvi rips it. Left center field. Down into the gap. That's a base hit. Hampson takes off for third. He rounds the bag. The Astros don't even bother to pick it up. Hampson scores standing. The Royals win the game. El Capitan comes through in the clutch. Jake Eisenberg there on the call for the Royals. Uh, they walk it off for their fourth win in a row, their seventh on the young season. And, guys, the AL Central has three teams above 500 right now. I know it's early, but I didn't see that coming. And there's your play of the day presented by Molly Mate. You're not happy with El Capitan, are you? No. Okay. No, I'm not. Well, in Kansas City, he's El Capitan. Really? I, hey, I'm with you, but you know, it's, it's, really, it's their story, and they're sticking to it. El Capitan, brought to you by Molly Maid. Oh my goodness! Give your spouse the gift of a clean house. Two three nine seven seven four fifty eight thirty nine. That's two three nine seven seven four five eight three nine. The law firm of Michael F. Hornung has successfully represented the citizens of Southwest Florida for over 30 years. As a former prosecutor, the information I know is information you need to know. If you've been arrested for a DUI, a criminal matter, or involved in an auto accident, call the law firm of Michael F. Hornung. I'm a local attorney with local knowledge to assist you through the process. For a free consultation, call 239-437-0095. That's 239-437-0095. Offices in Florida. Located on the East Trail, locally owned Naples Tiki Bar and Grill is an outdoor eatery next to the Hitching Post Shopping Center. Island-inspired food with a true tiki theme. The best place in Naples to enjoy the beautiful weather in Southwest Florida. The Naples Tiki Bar and Grill offers a great menu for dine-in or takeout. Enjoy our famous pool old pork, huge burgers, and tiki bar cocktails. Don't miss happy hour every day from 3 to 6 and live music seven days a week. See you soon at the Naples Tiki Bar and Grill, 11498 Tamiami Trail East. Visit Jason and Todd at the Diamond District. Are you ready for an event like no other? Join Jason and Todd at the Diamond District this weekend for their exclusive estate buying and selling event. It's time to dust off the old jewelry and dig out those fine timepieces you no longer wear. The Diamond District will pay top dollar for your unwanted treasures. Why let your valuable pieces gather dust when they could be putting cash in your pocket? That's not all. For those looking for exquisite jewelry at unbeatable prices, the Diamond District has you covered with a stunning selection of estate jewelry, meticulously curated and priced to sell. From dazzling diamonds and exotic gemstones to timeless Rolex watches, you'll find the perfect piece to elevate your style. Join the Diamond District this weekend for their estate buying and selling event, where they pay more for your jewelry and fine timepieces and sell for less. Don't miss out. Jason and Todd are in the store nearly every day and look forward to shaking your hand and welcoming you to their Diamond District family. At the Diamond District. You are listening to Miller and Moore on the Florida Sports Network.
All right. I'm having trouble on to word this, but I've got both Scotty Scheffler and Sam Bird's wives are pregnant and both have said they would leave the Masters if their wives go into labor, even if in the lead on Sunday. Would you leave the Masters for the birth of your child? Is that... Wow. That's a long question. No blank. I mean, I can shorten it if you want. Yeah. Hey, by the way, so shout out to Adam who gave me this idea. I, I'm looking at the analytics here of the podcast. We got five downloads in Turkmenistan. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's how I have it there, David, right in the Twitch chat room there. You can look at it. Uh, we have more downloads in Turkmenistan than in Canada right now. Damn it. A? It's kind of weird. It's Sunday. You're leading the Masters. Your wife goes into labor. What do you do? A, W, D, and race to airport. B, finish the round. C, finish the round and hire a divorce lawyer. If you want to be funny. <laughs> it's Sunday, you're leading the Masters. Your wife goes into labor. If you want to put in parenthesis, with your first child, what do you do? Because in both of their cases, I believe it's their first kid. WD and fly home, stay and finish the round. There you go. A tradition like no other. <laughs> I like that question. Hello, friends. Both of my children were in labor for a long time. I feel like I could miss the round, finish the round and get back with plenty of time to spare. This is a question that I feel like my demo can't even answer because I don't even know. I could say I'd finish the round, but in the, I like moment, it, EB finish the round and have a grilled cheese. cheese. Actually, you're at the masters. You have a pimento cheese, but I get the point. <coughs> pimento cheese. Delicious. Very good. All right, here we go. You're listening to Miller and Moulton, only on the Florida Sports Network. And now, here's Mark Miller and David Moulton. 22 minutes before the top of the hour. Seth Everett joins us at the top of the hour. Whit Watson with a Masters preview coming up one hour from now. We've settled on our poll question. It's not bad. And it's current. Mark, take it away. If you are, it's Sunday and you're leading the Masters. Your wife goes into labor with your first child. What do you do? And this is relevant because this is the scenario that could be facing both Scotty Scheffler and Sam Burns. Sam Burns' wife's due next week. Scheffler's wife's due in two weeks. What do you do? What do you do? 
WD and fly home or stay and finish the round. Go to Miller underscore Moulton on X. That Mark Miller or the David Moulton on X as well to vote. Both have sworn that they will WD on the spot and grab a pimento and cheese on their way to the airport and fly home. We shall see about that. Ian Cummings is kind enough to join us right now. He analyzes the draft for Pro Football Network, profootballnetwork.com. Follow Ian on X at IC underscore draft. IC underscore draft. Ian, it's David and Mark. Good morning. How are you? Doing good. Doing good. We're finally on the home stretch for the NFL draft. Only three weeks, I think, now. Might even be less than that. So, you know, we spend the whole offseason speculating about what might happen, and that's a lot of the fun. But at the same time, it's going to be great to know what actually happens. Well, I'm curious, how much more adjustment to your big board, if you will, are you doing? Or is it pretty locked in and you're trying to just figure out where they're going to go? Yeah, so it's mostly locked in. My finalization date officially is April 15th. So next Monday, Tuesday, I want to have it done by then. Most of the top 100 is set. uh, But now as I get farther down the board, getting to some more top 150 guys if I can. So it's mostly solidified, but we're still putting finishing touches on it. When you look at the edge rushers, how do you see this draft going? Because there's a lot of, we've talked to a lot of people and there's, there's so few of them. Do you think the edge rushers are going to go early? Do you think there are guys, you know, Tampa sitting there in the twenties would love to get one of these guys, but will there be one there for them when they draft at 26? I think there's a good chance that if you want one of the top four guys, you might have to make a move up. I look at Dallas Turner, Layatu Latu, Jared Burst, and Chop Robinson. Those are the top four for me. And they're all in my top 20 on my big board. So there's a chance that one of them falls. The the draft is talented enough at positions like offensive tackle and wide receiver that it could push one down to Tampa. But if you really, really need a premier talent edge, you might not want to run that risk. So I think it's a situation where you could make a move up. But then at the same time, there are second round, third round options for you. But the whole point of this of this class in particular is that the volume is higher in that first round range. It dips off a little bit in the day two range, and then day three dips off even more. So if you want a premier guy, if you're Tampa, if you really need it, making the move up, being aggressive might be the way to go. Okay, who's number four of those four? Because the guy that I'm seeing more places than not, who's the one that could fall into the 20s, is Chop Robinson of Penn State. I'm curious, of the four, which is the one that if you're Green Bay at 25, Tampa at 26, you think is the one that might be either in play for you or close enough where you can move up to get him? Yeah, for sure. I think Chop Robinson has the best chance to fall. Jared Verse is my personal edge four. They're all very close together on my board. They're all kind of within Dallas Turner is a top 10 prospect for me. And then Latu, Verse, and, and uh, Robinson are all kind of in that 15 to 20 range for me. So they're clustered together. I think Robinson has the best chance to fall because you look at his production at the collegiate level, wasn't quite as effusive as a guy like Latu or Verse as a pass rusher, right? You can see the tools are there. 6'3", 254, 32 and a half inch arms. The speed to power is incredible. He's very alignment versatile. He's got explosiveness, bend, speed, all of those things, but he's still putting it together and not as sturdy as verse and run defense. So I could see him being the being the one to fall. And I think if he does fall to that point, you're getting a guy with a you know one of one athletic profile. So I think he's the one that would best fit that. But Jared Burst, I could see maybe being a surprise faller just because he's a great speed to power guy, a great run defender, but doesn't have great bend or hip flexibility. And that limits his pass rushing palette a bit. Um it, it could be one of those two. I think Robinson has the better chance. Uh, quick follow-up, uh, Braswell, the other Alabama edge. Do you see him as a second-round guy or a third-round guy? He's a second-round guy for me. I would, if, if you're Tampa Bay and you still need a guy late round two, I think that's a solid valuation for him. He's got great speed to power, again, really workman-like hands. He's explosive. He doesn't quite have the bend or hip flexibility that Turner has, and that limits his ability to breach the apex. But if you need a guy who can compress the pocket and work off of initial power, uh, I think he's great for that. Who's moving up your board? When we talked last time, you know, you you had you said you weren't completely set. So who is who has changed on your board? Who's moving up and why? Yeah, it's a good question. Uh, I'm getting to more of the cornerback class. Uh, it's it's a very deep corner class. I think we kind of gloss over how deep it is. One guy that is moving up my board and actually just entered my top 100. I tweeted a little bit about him yesterday. Uh, DeCamarian Richardson from Mississippi State. 
Um, I hadn't gotten to his tape in depth until yesterday, but I was looking at him and, you know, six foot two, 188, th- over 32 inch arms. So all the length that you want, very athletic, right? 434, 40 yard dash, then get a 10 8 broad jump, I want to say. So you're working with all of the tools. And then I watched him in coverage in zone. He's very good managing overlapping routes. He can, he can recover positioning and hip leverage. Uh, impressed man. He has the length to dictate positioning while also having the short area switch and the hip fluidity to recover. Um, the one thing I want him to improve is playing the ball. His ball skills are not great. He needs to get his head around quicker, but um, he's urgent in support. He's a top 100 guy for me, and he was previously in that day three range for me. So I, I'm moving him up. Max Melton from Rutgers is another corner who's moving up my board. He's now in my top 50, and he's borderline top five corner for me. I'm a really big fan of what he has to offer. Again, you know, he's 5'11", but he's got 32-inch arms, so he's low to the ground. He's fluid. He can swivel around in coverage, but he's also got the length to disrupt guys and get inside the frame. So he's got vertical speed, explosiveness, agility, physicality, slot boundary, versatility. Um, he's definitely one. And then if I could just throw out just one position in general, the safety class. I think a lot of the top safeties, Cole Bishop, Dadrian Taylor, Demerson, uh, those guys are moving up my board too. As I get more and more into that position, I think it's a little stronger than we've on. Well, sticking with corners then, uh, Kool-Aid McKinstry listed by many as the third corner in this draft. How far down do you see him falling? I think that's another guy, whether it's Miami, Tampa, you know, in the 20s. And uh, the Iowa corner, uh, Cooper uh, Dijon there, Dijon. Uh, do you see him as a corner or a safety? Yeah, so McKinstry first is my CB3. I'm a big fan of what he has to offer. I think we sleep on how complete his game is sometimes. He's very good in zone. His route awareness and identification skills is top notch, but at the same time, he can really suffocate wide receivers and press man. He's very good at limiting space and using his footwork and targeted physicality. He's fluid. He's got enough vertical speed, um, and he's got swarming ball skills too. So uh, just a really complete corner. I like him. He kind of reminds me of Joe Hayden from back in the day, just a really solid versatile player with great physical toughness, great chops. Um, and I think he can be a really good starter for a, a long time. So my CB3, top 20 player for me. Cooper DeJean is my top safety prospect. I think he could fit a corner in specific schemes, specifically cover three, right, where he's playing more inside saddle, off the ball with his eyes to the QB. I think that's where he fits the best. He does have the functional athleticism. We saw it as pro day. He confirmed it. You know, he's got speed. He's very explosive. But I think at six foot, over 200 pounds, a little muscle bound, and you see that with his redirection ability. There are times when he's not quite able to sink as much on sharp redirections and route breaks like other guys can, right? So because of that, I would probably want to limit him to, you know, space routes as a field safety or a boundary, you know, kind of a slot guy as well, where he can keep his eyes to the QB, right? Use the instincts and the reaction ability and the ball skills that makes him such a special playmaker on the back end, right? So I think, I think you know, he can play corner in specific roles, but the move to safety isn't just about mitigating weaknesses. It's also about playing to his most uh, dynamic strengths. Ian, how many players do you have first round grades on? I know you have a top 100 and obviously we can just take that and say 32, but how many guys actually truly have first round grades in your opinion? Yeah. So first round grade for me, I would say anything above an 8.5 is a player that I would consider in round one. And it's actually a, a deeper group than, than I've usually seen this year. I think I have upwards of almost 30 guys in this class with over an 8.5. So um, you know, it's it's a really strong class. I think you got a lot of blue chip talent at the top with guys like Brock Bowers, Roma Dunes, and the whole big three of wide receivers. The top two QBs, obviously, a couple offensive tackles, Dallas Turner, Terry and Arnold as well. So I've got almost ten, almost a dozen blue chip guys, and then thirty first round players. So the depth of the day two range falls off a little bit, but I, I think this class gets overlooked for how deep it is at really important spots. I think first round talent around thirty. I think it cuts off. Tyler Guyton, Christian Haynes, uh, Michael Penix Jr., Tyler Newb, and a few guys that are kind of at the tail end of that fringe. But if you need a guy in the first round, I think this is a great class because it doesn't dip off. I think even in the 20, 25 range, you're still getting solid talent. He's a draft analyst for Pro Football Network, profootballnetwork.com. He's Ian Cummings. Follow Ian on X at IC underscore draft, IC underscore draft. How many of those 8.5s or above are quarterbacks? Uh, three of them, three of them, Drake May, Caleb Williams, and Jaden Daniels. Uh, JJ McCarthy is, is, um, I think he's also a, over an 8.5. So four. Yeah. And then Michael Penix is on the fringe. Him and Bo Nix are both kind of on the fringe, uh, but they're just outside it. So I think those top four above an 8.5, I would consider them round one. Where do you have Spencer Rattler? Just curious. Cause he's going to be a day two pick and a lot of people looking at him as, you know, 
that underlier from the quarterback class. What do you think of him? Yeah, so he graded out, I think, close to an eight for me. I think high seven, so he would be an early day three, late day two for me. He's kind of on that top 100 fringe. I really like the physical talent. Uh, the arm pops. He's very good at generating velocity. He's got great angle freedom. Uh, he's not an elite creator, but he has enough change of direction to work within the pocket. I actually think there are some similarities to a pre-resurgence Baker Mayfield. You just look at, you know, the stocky frame, um, you know, not an elite athlete or, or creator, but, you know, again, that arm, it pops. He's got competitive toughness. And that South Carolina situation, the offensive line, the blocking wasn't always great. The receiving core had a few injuries they had to walk, work through. So I think the biggest question with him, has he matured since his days at Oklahoma? And every every account from the Senior Bowl uh, talked about a guy who was in command of the offense, who was leading his teammates, right? So you love to see that. I have him as a day two, day three fringe guy, but with the lacking depth of developmental quarterbacks in the day two range, I could easily see him going late day two for a team that has a long term need to QB. Tell you what, I saw him against Georgia last year, and they were over, you know, outmanned, obviously, and he acquitted himself really well with a lot of poise, and they couldn't block him, and he still played well. So I'm with you. I would take him if I needed a developmental quarterback, and I wouldn't wait to Saturday. Uh, The kid from Texas who just got the DUI, the sweat, the D lineman, uh, obviously that'll probably cost him at least a round, but where do you have him as a prospect? Yeah, he's also kind of on that top 100 fringe for me. He was in my top 100. I bumped him down a little bit just because it is a concern, right? You know, and I, I'll be like, I'm a media scout, right? You know, I don't have the, the direct tie-in to these guys knowing of their character that scouts do, right? But just looking at it from the surface level, getting caught up in that kind of thing, the month of the draft isn't a great look, especially when there there were reports that, you know, he'd been honest and upfront with it, with teams about his you know, partying instincts right in college, right? Saying that's behind him, and then this shows up. It is a concern. It is something you take into account, you know. But he's still a top 100 talent for me, but it is something that you take into account. And you have a guy who's pretty closely graded with him, and Kinley Jackson from Texas A&M, another nose tackle who's explosive, has pass rushing juice, can encumber double teams and combo blocks. And, you know, the more and more I look at it, I like the value of McKinley Jackson in round three than, you know, Sweat would have been in round two or so. So I think a bump Sweat down a little bit. I think because of the scarcity of the nose tackle position, if a team has, has a big need at that and is willing to roll the dice on this guy, then they could easily take him at the tail end of round three. But it does add some uncertainty because you wonder, can he handle himself if this is happening so close to the draft? And just to confirm, in terms of first-round grades, at tight end and running back, it's just Bowers, right? There's no one else at either position that rates as a first-rounder? Yep, Yep. just Rock Bowers. Ben Sinnott from Kansas State is a top-50 guy at tight end for me. I'm a big fan of what he has to offer, but Rock Bowers is head and shoulders. He's, He's a weapon. He's not just a tight end. That's what I always like to say. Ian, thanks for your time and your analysis. We appreciate it. Hopefully, we can catch up before the draft, if not right after. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for having me on. Ian Cummings, draft analyst with Pro Football Network, profootballnetwork.com. They're doing a tremendous job, by the way, leading up to the draft. A ton of content and most of it of quality. So Pro Football Network, profootballnetwork.com, PFN 365 on X. You can follow Ian IC underscore draft. There you go. You got a good idea who the fifth cornerback is going to be taken in the draft. And I know that's the analysis you were looking for. Getting knee deep when he's going top 100 guys breaking into uh, day three of the draft. Listen, there are not many shows that can go in depth back to back on grilled cheese sandwiches in the NFL draft. Okay. It's part of our charm. I know it's not for many, but that's our versatility right there. Grilled cheese, cornerbacks, back to back. Okay. Now, you get a cornerback that likes a grilled cheese. He shoots right up the draft board. And if we're evaluating Trent Bally, okay, he likes mustard, thin layer of mustard on his bread, on his grilled cheese. Mark, does that help or hurt his draft status? It would kill it for me. (laughs) I wouldn't bet. He's off my board. (laughs) (laughs) I got to admit, I think it takes him from day two to day three for me. I really do. Uh, Seth Everett, we'll uh, ask him about grilled cheese next. Visit Jason and Todd. 
at the Diamond District. Are you ready for an event like no other? Join Jason and Todd at the Diamond District this weekend for their exclusive estate buying and selling event. It's time to dust off the old jewelry and dig out those fine timepieces you no longer wear. The Diamond District will pay top dollar for your unwanted treasures. Why let your valuable pieces gather dust when they could be putting cash in your pocket? That's not all. For those looking for exquisite jewelry at unbeatable prices, the Diamond District has you covered with a stunning selection of estate jewelry, meticulously curated and priced to sell. From dazzling diamonds and exotic gemstones to timeless Rolex watches, you'll find the perfect piece to elevate your style. Join the Diamond District this weekend for their estate buying and selling event, where they pay more for your jewelry and fine timepieces and sell for less. Don't miss out. Jason and Todd are in the store nearly every day and look forward to shaking your hand and welcoming you to their Diamond District family. At the Diamond District. Mark Miller for Molly Maid. Why Molly Maid, you ask? Trust. Molten was a customer for 15 years. Affordability. Didn't I just say Molten was a customer for 15 years? Worry-free services. Our professional house cleaners are fully insured and a 24-hour warranty. Call Molly Maids today at 239-774-5839. That's 239-774-5839 or online at mollymade.com slash F-T-M-Y-E-R-S. That's mollymade.com slash F-T-M-Y-E-R-S. Hello, friends and family of Southwest Florida. Are you looking to tap into the electric vehicle market? Well, look no further because we here at Southwest Florida Golf Carts have just what you need. E-bikes, golf carts, LSBs, scooters, and more. Come down and talk with one of our experienced sales reps, have a soda and a smile, and you could be cruising the streets in your new EV today. Stop by the store or visit our website at flgolfcarts.com and enter for a chance to win $100 off your next purchase by answering John's monthly sports question. The law firm of Michael F. Hornung specializes in criminal defense, DUI, personal injury, nursing home claims, and auto accidents. I'm a former prosecutor with over 34 years of experience. The information I know is information you need to know. If you've been arrested for a DUI, time is of the essence to maintain your driving privileges. Call the law firm of Michael F. Hornung for a free consultation. At the law firm of Michael F. Hornung, we are committed to excellence in your representation. Being a local attorney with local knowledge is clutch to the success of your case. For over 30 years, we have successfully represented the citizens of Southwest Florida. For a free consultation, call 239-437-0095. That's 239-437-0095. Our offices are conveniently located in Fort Myers. Visit online at mfh-law.com. You're listening to Miller and Moulton on the Florida Sports Network. Yo. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Not bad. A little tired. Went to a hockey game last night. So, you know, the little uh, post-hockey malaise. Saw Austin Matthews score a couple goals, huh? Yeah, we did. He's very good. Yes, he is. And getting no consideration really for the MVP despite scoring 67 goals or whatever it is. No, he he's he's extraordinary. And I didn't check his ice time, but he it, it felt like he was on the ice all game. He's got to be like triple shifting. You know, it's funny. I I don't like extra commercials that they've added to all sports because I don't think they help the sport. Right. But putting the media timeouts into hockey oh, has helped the sport because oh. it gets the best players on the ice more. Yeah. It's it's interesting. You know, I mean, totally. we don't yeah. like TV timeouts. We don't like media time. We don't like the game getting slowed down by and large. But it's actually helped hockey because it gets the best players out. Have you guys done a lot on Tony Clark? I thought of you guys on Monday. No, we haven't. Oh, let's do it. That's fun. They shortened it by two seconds. What are you talking about? The pitch clock? Uh, yes. I believe it's 18 now. That is literally the definition of petty. Well, I thought they talked about the, that and one other minor change, and they thought they'd cut five more minutes off it, off the game. Five minutes? That's what they said. It seemed like a lot to me. Well, we're talking about 250 
pitches, two seconds, you know, it, but I don't know that anybody's going to move any faster, but I think they said, you know, they yeah. thought. No, we'll talk about it. They thought they'd save two, five minutes. I will say the games have been quick. I haven't noticed any difference. Because you don't watch. No, I watch. I watch a couple games. I was going to watch the um, the uh, the Eclipse game, the Yankees Marlins. I was going to go, and, they and then moved they moved it to time. six o'clock. I was like, I can't do that. So, well, I mean, you know, you don't want in the third inning. All of a sudden, there's an eclipse. No, no, I, I'm not blaming them for moving it. <laughs> <laughs> if they have moved it to nine thirty, that would have been perfect. I was going to go, but uh, yeah, I can't do six o'clock. Well, traffic to Yankee Stadium uh, for oh, a six o'clock game is brutal. ideal. Just brutal. <laughs> oh. There was a there was a family that had a camper van and they pulled up in the parking lot of a mall with their eclipse glasses and they put out lounge chairs and they were all set up. And I went to go get my, I got new glasses and I was getting them adjusted and I walked in and I just was like, right on folks. And they're like, you want to look, you want to look. I was like, no, nah, I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> See you later. Michael, I'm always a pickle on the side. Love me some pickles. Love pickles. Extra pickles, please. Big, big, you know. Slice a pickle on the side, guy. All right, here we go. You are listening to Miller and Moulton, exclusively on the Florida Sports Network. And now, here's Mark Miller and David Moulton. Just like that, show is flying. Third and final hour along the network of Miller and Moulton on this hump day. And, well, we begin every 8 o'clock hour in the East on a Wednesday with Seth Everett. He of Sports with Friends, Hall of Justice, two terrific, long-running, and that is difficult to say, podcasts. Follow Seth on X at Seth underscore Everett, Seth underscore Everett. Top of the morning to you, friend. How are you? Good morning. Uh, yeah, Sports with Friends hit episode 450 today. 450. Well done. With Pretty sponsors and everything. That's not you just doing it for the hell of it. I mean, because that's what Miller and Moulton do. I, we just do it for the hell of it. For the hell you of actually it. have people that like... Yeah, but you've been a client a... for 15 years. Right. I mean, that's impressive. Yeah, 450. That was uh, pretty wild. It's an easy number to save it as. Like, I didn't have to go look it up. <laughs> right. <laughs> you don't know that going in? No, no, no. Like, it, when I'm finished editing and I go to save it, um, I have to go look. Is it 429, 427? You know, like, you don't know, you don't know, but 450, I've known. So it was easy. All right. It's John uh, Smoltz, by the way. He was freaking awesome. Yeah, well, he's got a lot of quality material, you know. Hall of, Hall of Famer, yeah. It's not the first Hall of Famer we've had on, but he's the uh, most recent. And we'll talk about that uh, coming up. Hey, um, our poll question. Okay. And don't know what the situations were. I didn't see with it. With you, your wife, and your two daughters. But uh, our poll question, Scotty Scheffler and Sam Burns. But Scheffler's the best golfer in the world right now. Yeah. And uh, his wife's very pregnant due in two weeks with their first child. Yeah. So, of course, what happens if she goes into labor during the Masters? What do you do? So, our poll question, Seth, it's Sunday. You're leading. 
And oh, you're uh, leading. Oh, now he has to be leading. You're leading. Well, he's number one player in the world. He's the biggest favorite in this tournament. I understand that. But still, the probability is he's not going to be leading. But okay. Well, no, actually, I think the probability is that he's going to be leading. He's a okay. huge betting favorite. He won it two years ago. All right. There's a very good chance he's on the first page of the leaderboard. Put it that way. That he'll go into Sunday okay. thinking That's he fair. can win. He'll be in the conversation. Yes. Okay. So you're Scheffler. You're going into Sunday. You got a chance to win. At first child, wife goes into labor. What do you do? I it's easy for me to say, but uh, I, I say you go to the birth. Okay, so you you really? WD and you race to the airport. Yep. yep. Okay. I finish. I'm telling you right now. Okay. And You're I don't wrong. Say the same thing for the U.S. Open, for the PGA, for the British Open, for yeah, yeah, and many other things. But if I'm in the hunt Sunday at Augusta. I'm finishing. I get it. I get it. And uh, you know, but I also, I have the uh, the the uh, the weirdest feeling about uh, the Masters in Augusta. I'm not trying to get controversial in any way. I it just the the tournament does nothing for me. Like it's just like the British Open. It's just like the U.S. Open. It's just like the PGA Championship. I I I, I it's not on a bucket list. I don't have any interest in going. I'll put it on because just like I casually watch any golf tournament. There's nothing specific about this one. So if Scotty Scheffler was going to leave three weeks from now for, for the same reason, he should leave this one. That's my logic. My, I just asked my wife during the break. I said, okay, we're asking this question again. I know we've asked it two or three times over the years. And she said, well, here's what you as the guy, you have to answer it by saying you'll leave. But in reality, it's my <laughs> call. It's my call. I will tell you what we're doing. Okay. So for, you know, to avoid any controversy for you. Okay. She said, what we should all do is say what Scheffler and Sam Burns have said, which is their WD and their race into the private jet. Okay. But ultimately she yeah, sure. will decide what it is you're doing. Yeah, uh, that's fair. That's fair. And my wife said, you will stay and finish the round and then race to the airport. So I'm, <laughs> which still shocks me, but that that's her story and she's sticking to it. So that's our poll question that Mark Miller. Did you see uh, the guy on the, I think uh, on the crack in Adam Larson, he had a game consecutive game streak of 335 consecutive games. And he broke the streak to go see his child get birth, born. Well, I mean, streak. Yeah, I know it's four years. I mean, that's not missing a game for four years. That's impressive. Yeah. But I mean, we're not, you know, chasing no, I'm not, down. I'm, I'm not. I'm not sure. It's not apples to apples. I, I'm just saying right. that just happened. Adam Larson's streak was broken because he left. All right. Good. Nice footnote there. That's, that's our poll question. It's an epilogue. <laughs> vote, vote accordingly. <laughs> uh, Seth, we listen. You'd be proud of us. We went with that because we nearly went with grilled cheese. Today's national grilled yeah, cheese. Grilled cheese is gross. What? What? Oh, I, I'm ready to end this interview. He doesn't like the Masters and grilled cheese is gross. Who's uh, on the damn pie? John Smoltz, we already know that in sports. Right. <laughs> grilled uh, cheese. All of justice go and we can end this sucker. <laughs> yeah, it's gross. <laughs> grilled, what are you talking about? I, I never had it. I never had I was a big PB and J person. Hold on. You've How can never it be gross if you've never had it? No, no, no. I, I mean, I had it when I was a kid and it was a bad experience and uh, that was it. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, what your I mom know. burned the bread i mean how can it be a bad experience no and i used to make it for my kids and it smelled bad and i just never what kind of cheese i think american i think munster maybe i don't know wow. it's not a not a filed memory are you against cheese on the whole or just grilled cheese no i like cream cheese i like um Cottage cheese. Cottage cheese is strong. Wow. Wow. You are we are not in sync today at all. <laughs> hey, you got a theory on all these uh baseball injuries? Yeah. <laughs> the world's coming to an end. And this is it. This is the this is the model. <laughs> um no, the my only uh thing that I, I hadn't even realized that uh they reduced the t the pitch clock two more seconds. And that is something that I think will have absolutely minimal impact on the actual sport. And if it pisses off the union, why'd you do it? What was the benefit Five of 
But Five they said, minutes. they said, was, Manfred said, I'm doing two more seconds. We've studied it. And we think two seconds per pitch over the course of a game, when the average game has between 250 and 300 pitches, We'll do five. Minutes. No, no, no. I, I, I get that. What I'm saying is Manfred deci- deciphers this right in, in his infinite wisdom. And he calls Tony Clark and says, I, I want to do this. And Tony Clark says, heck no. That's end of story. Mm-mm. What is the benefit for Manfred? Ha- has anyone and I and I mean this sincerely, has anyone gone on to, uh, on social media and said, boy, the games are five minutes faster. Now the difference from 2022 to 2023 was significant. That's right. a real. That's a real thing. Right. From 23 to 24, that's nothing. And if well, he and, did it to, and and if, and if it ticked off Tony Clark, why? What was the point? Well, in Manfred's case, it, it's you know he said five minutes, and that's important to us. We're trying to make sure it's for television. You know, pregame, game, post. Try to make sure that the whole sucker's you know three hours or less. You know, in people's times, and he's trying. I think Seth, he's trying to get two forty to two thirty. I really think he's trying to get baseball down to two and a, a half. Baseball hours. game will not be two thirty. I know. I th- I just think he's trying. I know uh, an NBA game, a hockey game. That's two thirty. A baseball game is not two thirty. It might be two fifty, hey. but it's not two thirty ever. Well, well, the average game ever to year. the point of where you can make another plan. Okay. We were in the parking lot last night. We went to a hockey game. We were in the parking lot last night, and we stayed for the final whistle uh, at 9.30 for a 7 o'clock game. We were home before 10. Tremendous night. That's what Manford wants for baseball. Yeah, well, isn't he leaving? Uh, He is by the end of the decade, though. He said he's on his last contract, so I think they need a new commissioner in five years. I will have a flying car by then. (laughs) Right. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to be back, be back to gas guzzlers by then. Okay. We're going in the different direction. I think by yeah, then. We'll see. <laughs> he's Seth Everett sports with friends, hall of justice. So he's the masters Eh, grilled cheese. Eh. Yeah, the uh, masters co- is just kind of cottage cheese. Night. Big yeah, thumbs this up. Is, to this, cottage is a, cheese. this is a tough one. Like right now, like I can't, I, no, no, I get it. I, I get it. But it's the same people who love James Bond's move, James Bond movies and uh, game of Thrones and, uh, it just uh, there, there's things that there there's a there's a cluster of things that people love that I could care less about, and this is one of them. Yeah, it's one of them. Okay. Besides, what did John Smoltz say on Sports with Friends? John Smoltz uh, talked about strikeouts, and he talked about how teams that win don't strike out, and he doesn't understand why more teams try to uh, cultivate lineups that don't don't strike out and use the Astros recent world series as the example. And you don't get an argument from me, but nobody professes that nobody teaches that. And, you know, he won't, he won't say, well, it's because the sport is dumb, you know, and I didn't say that either, but my, my whole argument was with him, you know, we recorded this before Shane Bieber got hurt. So we didn't have that context of it. But we did talk about injuries and we talked about his decision to uh, relieve, you know, when he was a starter because of injuries. And he talked about how pitchers and how they deal with injuries defines their career and whether or not they embrace uh, the injuries that they've had. If they let an injury defeat them, you know, then they can't come back. He, he was he was a, he was an interesting dude to talk to. Really interesting. I had interviewed him before, but uh, he was he was really cool. I asked him, who's a bigger jerk, uh, John Smolter, uh, uh, Joe Buck, or Joe Davis? Hmm. You have I'll to listen very... to the podcast wow. for his answer. I, I like that. That's a good question. Okay. <laughs> uh, Hall of Justice, go. A uh, gentleman by the name of Lenny Jacobson. He's been in a ton of stuff. He was most recently in that show that I love, For All Mankind. Uh, it's on Apple+. Plus. It's about the uh, the space race. And uh, he's also was in the TV show version of Frequency. He was on Arrow. He was on uh, uh, Peacemaker. Um, he's been on a bunch of things. Lenny Jacobson on Hall of Justice. Did he ever do a Bond film? No. Okay. But he was in a Transformers movie. He was in Bumblebee. So he was talking about how, how to act up against one of those Transformers. It's like a stick. 
Well, you got to be careful. If you touch it, you get electrocuted. Uh, Sports with Friends, Hall of Justice. He's Seth Everett. Follow him on X at Seth underscore Everett. Uh, Seth, sorry about your devils. Better luck next year. Yep, next year. There's always next year. Seth and enjoy Everett. your cottage cheese for lunch today. Yeah, really. God, I didn't say that. We'll be eating grilled cheese. I just said it's, it's not bad. Oh, don't know about that. Seth Everett, very controversial appearance yeah, here very. on Miller <laughs> and Moulton. <laughs> Thanks for listening. Hello, friends and family of Southwest Florida. Are you looking to tap into the electric vehicle market? Well, look no further because we here at Southwest Florida Golf Carts have just what you need. E-bikes, golf carts, LSVs, scooters, and more. Come down and talk with one of our experienced sales reps, have a soda and a smile, and you could be cruising the streets in your new EV today. Stop by the store or visit our website at flgolfcarts.com and enter for a chance to win $100 off your next purchase by answering John's monthly sports question. Mark Miller for Molly Made. Why Molly Made, you ask? Trust. Molten was a customer for 15 years. Affordability. Didn't I just say Molten was a customer for 15 years? Worry-free services. Our professional house cleaners are fully insured and a 24-hour warranty. Call Molly Maids today at 239-774-5839. That's 239-774-5839 or online at mollymade.com slash F-T-M-Y-E-R-S. That's mollymade.com slash F-T-M-Y-E-R-S. The waterways of Naples are a beauty to behold, and the Bayfront Inn has multiple ways for guests to enjoy the water and have some fun. Gather your family and friends and enjoy a leisurely day on the water with a pontoon or deck boat. If you prefer to explore the waterways without a motor, the Bayfront has canoes, standboards, and kayaks. At the end of your journey, enjoy lunch or dinner at the Bamboo Tropical Bar and Grill, the Bayfront Inn. Something for everyone on Fifth Avenue in Naples. Located on the East Trail, locally owned Naples Tiki Bar and Grill is an outdoor eatery next to the Hitching Post Shopping Center. Island-inspired food with a true tiki theme. The best place in Naples to enjoy the beautiful weather in Southwest Florida. The Naples Tiki Bar and Grill offers a great menu for dine-in or takeout. Enjoy our famous pulled pork, huge burgers, and tiki bar cocktails. Don't miss happy hour every day from 3 to 6 and live music seven days a week. See you soon at the Naples Tiki Bar and Grill, 11498 Tamiami Trail East. You are listening to Miller and Moore on the Florida Sports Network. Seth, not very happy today. No. He's like, I hate the Masters. I hate your Wow, days. yeah. Number we're we're on in the top three golf markets in the country, and he's just bashing the damn <laughs> Masters. Like, <laughs> ah, you know, Valero, Texas Open, Masters, same thing. Holy blank. Driving up to see a buddy in Tampa. After this, All right. for the day, yeah, good for you. He's a teacher. He's on spring break. You got anything here? Because I got something if you need it. Go. I guess you're just what I needed. Uh (laughs) Uh-oh. We have a singer. No, we don't. No, he's not very good either. He's a little better than Felipe, but still not, not good.
a buddy of mine just texted me and said, my answer is I'm staying. Good luck with the name. <laughs> that funny. What is that funny from that little one liner you say? What's that from? I, I, I don't know. I know funny and that funny. I just, so you just, that, that's sure. a, that's a Moltonism. No, it, it, something from, a, you know, that funny. I don't know. <laughs> Stolen from somewhere, but not uh, anything that would be memorable. Correct. Empire, thanks for the recommendation. I'll check it out. Are you meeting him somewhere? Or are you going right to, directly to Tampa? I'm going to his place. He's got a Airbnb. Okay. On the beach. oh, so he's from? He's actually in St. Pete. Oh, you get to go over the bridge. Yes. Pay some money. Pay some tolls. Okay, friends, here we go. You're listening to Miller and Moulton, only on the Florida Sports Network. And now, here's Mark Miller and David Moulton. 21 minutes past the hour. Whit Watson does a lot of golf. Golf Channel, ESPN Plus, even hosts a golf show. In Orlando on the weekends. Whit Watson to join us coming up in a little bit. By the way, breaking news, Jaguars defensive end Josh Allen, I think just got five years and like up to 150. That's a lot of money. That's 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 almost quarterback money right there. Wow. That's that's serious. So uh Emmys came out yesterday. Nominations. Sports Emmy nominations came out yesterday. Okay. So um they, You got a shot at number three? <laughs> no. No. So <laughs> uh for those that don't know, uh Army Navy game on CBS won an Emmy for best broadcast in 2017. I'm a part of it. If you're a part of it, oh, Although it's remarkable, the talent, you know, Brad Nessler, Gary Danielson, um, I think that was Allie LaForce, I think, was sidelined. I, they don't get an Emmy. That's where that whole Emmy controversy came from last fall involving ESPN. The guy who was running it thought it was ridiculous. Like if game day won an Emmy, that Fowler or Reese or Herb Street, whatever, they didn't get Emmys. The whole crew got them and not the people fronting the show. And I do think that's absurd. I, I agree with that. How ESPN went about it was ridiculous. Right. They then submitted fake names and got extra Emmy sent to them and then changed the name on the Emmy and handed them out to, you know, Reese and Chris and Kirk and what have you. So anyway, the... So there's two studio show categories. One is uh, daily. And then, uh, well, actually, there's three. Weekly, daily, and limited run. So like, you know, the Fox baseball postseason show that runs for three, four weeks. 
that got nominated. So those limited runs were game day, the playoffs, Fox MLB postseason, inside the NBA for the playoffs, ESPN NFL countdown, postseason, road to the final four. Okay. The daily ones that got nominated, MLB Tonight, NBA Countdown, NFL Live, Pardon the Interruption, and Sports Center. The weekly ones, it almost always comes down to game day versus inside the NBA. Which one of those is going to win? The other three that got nominated were Pat Show, the NFL Today. He would get an Emmy if it wins. Uh, at Fox NFL Sunday, and also Fox Big Noon Kickoff. They're a pregame show nominated for an Emmy. Uh, that's really good for them. Look at how far that show has come, right? Okay. So now the individuals. Studio host, Kevin Burkhart, which is interesting because he's the number one play-by-play guy for NFL on Fox, but he hosts their baseball studio show. So Burkhart gets nominated. Reese Davis gets nominated. Scott Van Pelt gets nominated. Ernie Johnson, Malika Andrews. Malika does all the basketball for ESPN and ABC. Play-by-play. Mike Breen. Bang! Ian Eagle. Kevin Harlan. Mike Tirico. Joe Buck. Yeah. No offense to Joe. Kevin Harlan should win that. Well, I don't know. Joe's won seven. I don't know how many more Joe wins. You know, you get to a point in which they usually they start going elsewhere. Plus, they usually give it to the guy who does the Super Bowl. But um, so that's the play-by-play. Breen has won a few recently. Yes. Breen's on a, a run here of winning the Emmy. But also, it's interesting, Ian Eagle got it over Nance. The number Hello, two play-by-play guy at CBS gets it over the number one guy. Okay. Uh, analyst in the studio, Barkley, Nate Burleson, Ryan Clark, Herb Street gets nominated for studio, and Mina Kimes. Analyst for games, Herb Street doesn't get an Emmy nomination. Chris Collinsworth does. Greg Olson does. Bill Raftery does. John Smoltz does. Tom Verducci does. And Troy Aikman does. Has Troy won one of these? He has not. I believe it's his fourth nomination, third in the last five years, and he has not won one. Sideline reporter, Aaron Andrews. Kaylee Hartung, who does uh, Thursday nights, and Peacock, <clears throat> excuse me, Tom Rinaldi, Holly Rowe, Tracy Wolfson. I don't know if the Wolf has won. I know this is like third or fourth nomination for the Wolf. I don't know that she's won. So, so is she hungry for it? She's hungry like the Wolf, yes. And headed to the Masters before some time off. Well done. Uh, Trent, do you know the reference that Mark just made? Hungry like the wolf? Yeah. Hungry like yeah the Duran Duran. There okay. you go. Hey, 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 that's, hey. All the way, that's all the way back in the 80s. In the 80s. Correct. That's when Mr. Miller was. I saw Duran raised. Duran live like a couple months ago in Nashville. Did you really? They were excellent. They're good musicians. John Taylor's an incredible bass player. Niall Rogers opened for him, too. So that was a it was a party. Okay. So there you have it. You know, people have their opinions, who they like, who they don't like. You know, surprises that, hey, maybe so-and-so didn't get nominated. But I did find it interesting. Herb Street not nominated, and he's won recently as best analyst and doesn't get an Emmy as analyst. That's in the industry. That's a bit of an eyebrow raiser. But I do think it's very telling that neither Nance nor Romo get nominated. Because if you notice, the A-list guys and gals pretty much get nominated. And both Nance and Romo. Romo, who I think has gotten one nomination, has not won. Nance, who's won, obviously, quite a few. Well, it just shows how quickly the nation soured on Tony Romo. Well, and the industry also 
is and how Nance is getting caught up in the wash, so to speak. Yes. So those were the nominations yesterday. When do they have the sports Emmys? How far I down? Think the- in like a month. Usually it's in New York. I'm always amused by who actually, and when they're nominated, who actually goes. Yeah, some people are to the point which are like, yeah, whatever. Well, I, I don't like. I laugh because of the Dan Patrick's been nominated a bunch, mm-hmm. and it's turned into the Susan Lucci of the sports. Right. Evidence. They don't ever win. No, and in fact, I don't know. I'd have to check it out whether or not. Okay, they got nominated. I'll, I'll look. But they have done a great job of really poking fun at themselves by not winning. Correct. The past few years. I mean, even Costas coming on, coming on saying, hello, losers. I yeah. mean, it's <laughs> right. Uh huh. They've done a terrific job of really poking fun at themselves with their nominations and not winning. So I, I, I found some amusement in that. So, so there you have it for those that are interested. But I would like to see Troy obviously win one. He's never won one. You know, 20-something years. Yeah. I think it's ridiculous. I've got a trophy on the mantle, and he doesn't. Don't you Don't you find that absurd? Completely. <laughs> right. Well, I think it's really cool that you have one. And you know from the bottom of my heart, I think it's awesome that over your right. shoulder there's an Emmy that you won and deserved great work and all those things. But the fact that Troy Aikman doesn't have one and you right. do right. is ridiculous. Right. I mean, tell, you him know, you'll trade it, tell him you'll trade him the Emmy for one of his own parties. <laughs> How about the gold jacket for a weekend? I don't think he'd make that trade. You know, Gary doesn't have one. And he's been nominated a handful of times. You know, 35 years. You know, I would love for Gary to win one. You know, so, you know, there you have it. Sports Emmys. Whit Watson. I don't know if he has an Emmy, but I know he's next. Hello, friends and family of Southwest Florida. Are you looking to tap into the electric vehicle market? Well, look no further because we here at Southwest Florida Golf Carts have just what you need. E-bikes, golf carts, LSVs, scooters, and more. Come down and talk with one of our experienced sales reps, have a soda and a smile, and you could be cruising the streets in your new EV today. Stop by the store or visit our website at flgolfcarts.com and enter for a chance to win $100 off your next purchase by answering John's monthly sports question. Visit Jason and Todd. At the Diamond District. Are you ready for an event like no other? Join Jason and Todd at the Diamond District this weekend for their exclusive estate buying and selling event. It's time to dust off the old jewelry and dig out those fine timepieces you no longer wear. The Diamond District will pay top dollar for your unwanted treasures. Why let your valuable pieces gather dust when they could be putting cash in your pocket? That's not all. For those looking for exquisite jewelry at unbeatable prices, the Diamond District has you covered with a stunning selection of estate jewelry, meticulously curated and priced to sell. From dazzling diamonds and exotic gemstones to timeless Rolex watches, you'll find the perfect piece to elevate your style. Join the Diamond District this weekend for their estate buying and selling event, where they pay more for your jewelry and fine timepieces and sell for less. Don't miss out. Jason and Todd are in the store nearly every day and look forward to shaking your hand and welcoming you to their Diamond District family. At the Diamond District. Mark Miller for Molly Maid. Why Molly Maid, you ask? Trust. Molten was a customer for 15 years. Affordability. Didn't I just say Molten was a customer for 15 years? Worry-free services. Our professional house cleaners are fully insured and a 24-hour warranty. Call Molly Maids today at 239-774-5839. That's 239-774-5839 or online at mollymade.com slash F-T-M-Y-E-R-S. That's mollymade.com slash F-T-M-Y-E-R-S. You are listening to Miller and Molten on the Florida Sports Network. So saw this post, just telling Trent, David, saw this post on Bear Alexander. He is entering the transfer portal again. This will be his seventh school in seven years. Went to four different high schools every year, went to a different school. Went to Georgia's freshman year, USC his sophomore year, and now he's going to a different school. 
Yep. Don't think I'd want him on my team. I could see where you wouldn't. By the way, according to the industry, in terms of like who does the best job broadcasting their games, Thursday Night Football received nine nominations. Now, none of them from the talent involved, except for Kaylee Hartung. But behind the scenes and what have you, pictures, graphics, you name it, nine nominations. Sunday Night Football with five. Fox NFL with four. Monday Night Football with three. Now, the Super Bowl got nominated for, like, ten. But it's interesting. The NFL on CBS got nothing. By the way, there are reports coming out. Are you seeing the, about Scott Drew in Kentucky? Like this guy for 24-7 Sports and CBS Sports, Chris Rankin. What's on? Here we go. You're listening to Miller and Moulton, only on the Florida Sports Network. 22 minutes before the top of the hour, the Diamond District bonus hour awaits in the 239, our final segment along the network. And we are thrilled to be joined once again by Whit Watson, Golf Channel, PGA Tour Live, ESPN Plus, NBC Sports, host of Making the Cut, which you can hear Saturday mornings on 96.9, the game in Orlando. 
Follow Wit on X at Real Wit Watson. Real Wit Watson. Wit David and Mark. Good morning. How are you? Good morning. Happy Masters Week to all who celebrate, and uh, that would be all of us <laughs> listening this morning. Great week. I was going to say, bigger party on Monday, the Eclipse or the Masters? Uh, for me, it's the Masters. I mean, this thing now, it, it's become, you know, with the, the advent of the Augusta National Women's Amateur and the drive, chip, and putt, it truly is a an eight-day event. You know, I mean, really, things get started Saturday when the women take the golf course and had a terrific finish, an incredible finish uh, in that event with the winner birdieing three of her last four holes, including 17 and 18, and then seeing the kids on the golf course on Sunday morning. Uh, and then, and then the masters week begins. So it's, it's really like a, it's like Hanukkah, it's like eight days of <laughs> Augusta national. Awesome. All right. Scotty Scheffler is the overwhelming favorite. We haven't had a favorite like this since tiger in 2013. Why is Scotty Scheffler going to finish the deal? Well, he's done it before, number one. And number two, he's playing as well, if not better, than anybody else on the planet right now. I mean, going back to back at the players, no one had ever done that. And I had, as a guest on the radio show, uh, Justin Ray, who is a, a sports and, and specifically golf stat guru. And he told me on the show that the players is, the, statistically speaking, the most unpredictable golf tournament of the year on the PGA Tour. There is no stat that supports any given winner. And the fact that Scheffler went out and did something that no one had ever done, winning it back-to-back, -back, just shows you how he's playing. Uh, there's a lot of other guys out there that can win, but um, I think he's a prohibitive favorite for a reason, for a good reason. Your thoughts on the theory that the LIV guys just haven't been sharpened enough this year. It's just not serious and intense enough. And it doesn't matter what the stats say that it's not a good prep to come in and win a major. Obviously Kepka faltered in the masters last year, but a month later got it together at the PGA. Your thoughts on that theory. I think it's true that, they haven't played as much. I mean, that's a fact, right? They don't play as many events and they only play three rounds when they do. That being said, I don't think it would be a surprise if any of those guys contended. I mean, would you really be surprised if Sergio played well at Augusta this week? Would you be surprised if Kepka contended again? Um, you know, DeChambeau maybe hasn't been at the top of his game, but Cam Smith, it's not like they forgot how to play golf. They're just playing somewhere else. And, they're all, all of those players that I just mentioned are major winners that have exemptions and therefore can come back and play the Masters in the U.S. Open for this year and, and next year. And uh, I think that they're going to be ready. I, I don't think there's any, I don't think it's necessarily um, a discriminating or a, uh, the, the fact that they're playing on live does not preclude them from winning. They're not as sharp, true, but they're also guys that have been here before. For Rory McIlroy to win the Masters, he needs to do what? <laughs> Get out of his own head. Uh, it's been 10 years since he's won a major. And couple that with the fact that he's looking for the green jacket to complete the career grand slam. He even says he's in his mid-30s now. He's married. He's got a kid. He's in a different part of his life. And I think the biggest obstacle for him at this event is the mental block. He knows what it means to his legacy to complete a career grand slam. Only five players have ever done that. And I just think he has to, you know, this week he's been talking about trying to keep a routine and treat it like any other week. So he's maintaining a schedule that's similar to what he does for regular tour events. That's great. That's a mental gymnastic. Good for you. You know, if that, if that makes you feel better, great. He knows exactly what's on the line. And I think to answer your question, what he has to do is get out of his own way. Maybe the greatest driver of the ball ever, you know, mentioned with Arnie, mentioned with Norman. Uh, but he, Whit, he has not been historically a good player from 150 yards in. And, you know, that you would think is somebody that would not win at Augusta, right? You know, it's funny, too, isn't it, that as one of the greatest drivers of the golf ball in history, that it was the driver that that ruined yeah. his Masters that year when he hit it right. so far left on 10 that 
the cameras couldn't find the golf ball. Isn't it ironic? It was the driver that put him mm-hmm. under. Yeah, I mean, iron play and, and putting uh, is what wins the Masters. Um, you know, Johnny Miller famously called it the Augusta National Putting Contest. Uh, so if, if Rory's game is sharp in that respect, where he gets in trouble is getting a little too aggressive in spots where he shouldn't be aggressive. And that, you know, Nicholas always said, at Augusta, you play for the middle of the green. You know, you, you have to know when to when to take your chances and when not to take your chances. And I think that's what has been McElroy's undoing in years past. I've got a feeling about Hideki Matsuyama this week, if I'm not picking Scheffler. Who's the guy you like that's uh, not a, you know, Scheffler obviously is the favorite, easy pick. Who do you like this week, Whit? So we do a charity um, pool, a golf, a one and done up here with some people in Tampa. And we, we put money together and then give it a chair at the end of the year. And uh, I took Kepka. I just think he's built for events like this. He was close last year. Whether he plays a lot of golf or not, he is mentally completely checked in when it comes to big events, major championships. I think he's a guy to watch. I love the Matsuyama pick. He's a very popular pick this week uh, for good reason. He's playing well. And again, you know, it's, it's hard to take anybody. <laughs> My dad was asking me about like Ludwig Oberg, who's playing great. The first timers that hasn't happened since 1979, Fuzzy Zeller. So it's hard to take anybody that hasn't played the Masters a few times. And so I I think Kepka and and Matsuyama are good picks. Well, and Sergio lost in a playoff last week at at Doral, so he comes in in uh, pretty good form. And um, I don't know. I I got a Shoffley feeling. And, you know, that at some point these guys who – keep coming close they have to break through right i mean duval finally broke through i mean we've you know wit he's got to break through right you think so you, you i mean he has the game there's no question he's got the talent it's just a matter of there's in this case 87 other guys out there that are also pretty good um i would i could see shockley winning it's just so hard i think in my opinion i think it's really hard for the Masters to be your first major championship. Like, I could see Shockley picking off a PGA, you know, or a U.S. Open, maybe a Pinehurst this year. The Masters is, is so much local knowledge, and it's so much emotion, and the, the mental strain of knowing what's on the line, the green jacket, the lifetime exemption, you know, you're a part of history. Uh, the, the Danny Willits of the world are rare. They're few and far between. Um, that being said, you know, Shockley... I think he's going to win one. I'm not sure this week is going to be it, but yes, I think he'll win one. How much do you like Zalatoris being able to play a practice round with Tiger and pick his brain? Because obviously, as yeah. you said, the local knowledge is key. Yeah, Tiger, you know, he loves his uh, he loves his practice partners. Doesn't he? he goes out with Fred Couples every year. Already played nine holes with Couples and Zalatoris. Uh, you know, the ball striking has never been the question. He's one of the top two or three in the world. It's all going to come down to the putter for him and especially at this golf course. Um, we haven't really seen much of him lately and we don't have a, a real big body of work to judge in terms of where his game is right now. But if we're talking about his ability to find fairways and find greens, I mean, yeah, he's as good as anybody in the world, but it comes down to getting the ball in the hole. And he's played well there twice. Whit Watson, Golf Channel, NBC Sports, PJ Tour Live on ESPN+. Plus. He also hosts Making the Cut, Saturday mornings, 11 a.m. Check it out, 96.9 The Game in Orlando. And follow Wit on X at Real Whit Watson. It's Wit with one T, Real Wit Watson. All right, you mentioned him. Are we to take him seriously or is tiger now at the stage where jack was in 86 when they said nope too old too rusty not going to contend anymore because boy wit for the last 72 hours anybody who's on the grounds all they've been able to say is man does tiger look good yeah supposedly he shot 31 for a nine hole practice round that's the rumor around the grounds it's all going to come down to his body. You know, it's not the mind. He's still plenty long. Nobody knows the golf course better than he does. It's just, can his body withstand four rounds on that golf course and doing it in competition with 87 other guys who are, like I said, also pretty good. At this point, he has more surgeries than major championships. 
And, you know, he's got a fused ankle and a fused lower back. And that golf course is no joke. This is the part where I'm federally mandated to say that the TV cameras don't do it justice in terms of their <laughs> elevation. Uh, it's a law. I have to say it. Uh, every broadcaster does. But it's, it's a hard walk. And it's a hard walk for four days for a guy who's in his condition. So I think making the cut is a reasonable goal. And if he does, he sets the record for consecutive cuts made at Masters. And I think that's on his mind. Uh, believe me, knowing Tiger and how competitive he is, he's thinking about it. Um, but contention, I feel like at this point, is a stretch. I'm happy to be wrong, but I, I don't think I am. Playing to follow up with Tiger, he, he's going to have very much the Hogan like career from this point forward. He's going to play two, three to six events a year, which is what Hogan did uh, the last six to eight years of of his career. Uh, Hogan contended a couple times. Do you think he can still get in the mix over the next five years playing as infrequently as he's going to play? Yes, I think he can if he picks his spots. I was a little surprised, for example, that he didn't play Bay Hill, where he's won eight times here in Orlando. A little surprised he didn't play the players, and he was eligible to play it and just didn't show up and, and made no comment as to why he wasn't playing in, uh, in Ponte Vedra. So I think if he picks his courses, which he can do as a lifetime member of the PGA Tour, then yeah, he can absolutely get in the mix. Uh, is he a ceremonial golfer? Not yet. I mean, it, this, this is all physical. Everything that's, that's holding Tiger back right now, and, and the Hogan analogy is a good one, you know, coming back after the car accident. You know, Tiger's had, like I said, multiple surgeries, multiple injuries. And I think that if he can get healthy-ish, as healthy as a 48-year-old guy with 15 surgeries can get, he absolutely can contend in spots. And, and, Maybe Augusta is one of them, but I mean, he himself said earlier this year that his game and his body just wasn't ready for competition. So I'd like to see him get recovered, fully recovered, and then let's see where he can contend. Wit, as always, continued success. Thanks for making time for us. Safe travels, and we can do this again, hopefully, later in the spring. Yeah, looking forward to it, guys. Thank you very much. Wit Watson, Golf Channel. PGA Tour Live, ESPN Plus, he does a ton of golf play-by-play. -play. NBC Sports, because they own the Golf Channel. And then Saturday mornings, 11 a.m., you know, download it on an app and what have you, making the cut, 96.9 The Game in Orlando. Real Wit Watson on X, Wit with one T, Real Wit Watson. So Xander Shoffley is your pick if it's not Scotty Scheffler. I am going to go Shoffley, which is against everything that I believe in. I he is really good. He's like Rory, though, with, you know, he can't get out of his way at the end. I mean, he's really good for 66 holes. But, and this, if you can't close, this is a tough tournament to predict you're going to close at. But I actually think, Mark, that when Shoffley finally breaks through and wins a major, he's going to win by five. And maybe that's the case. I disagree with you because I don't – everything that you said is the reason I wouldn't pick him. Right. He's become my Ricky Fowler. I am not picking this guy. I hope I'm wrong. I, I like him. I like the game. But I'll go with Matsuyama. I like the way he's playing right now. If I'm not picking Scheffler, I'll go Matsuyama. That's that's where I'm at for this week. By the way, uh, tea times are out. Kepka may be the fastest player on tour. They paired him with Brian Harmon who does about 14 waggles every time before he swings a golf club. If Kepka starts going crooked, I, he might accost Harmon midway through a round. True, you just can't watch your playing partner. No. You just got to find something else to look at. And there's plenty to look at. I'll tell you what, though, if you're Kepka, you're thinking that the folks at Augusta National, this is like, you know, they bring out the brackets and we see who they pair against one another and they go, oh, they have a sense of humor. Okay. And this is Augusta National having a sense of humor. There's nobody who's more public about slow play than Kepka, and they put him with maybe the slowest guy in the field. Par three today, the Masters gets underway tomorrow. Can't wait. Everybody but Seth Everett can't wait. <laughs> He's more excited about having some cottage cheese today than the Masters. I just, I don't know. We might have to suspend him for a week. I, 
think you're on to something, David. I think that was insubordination. The law firm of Michael F. Hornung specializes in criminal defense, DUI, personal injury, nursing home claims, and auto accidents. I'm a former prosecutor with over 34 years of experience. The information I know is information you need to know. If you've been arrested for a DUI, time is of the essence to maintain your driving privileges. Call the law firm of Michael F. Hornung for a free consultation. At the law firm of Michael F. Hornung, we are committed to excellence in your representation. Being a local attorney with local knowledge is clutch to the success of your case. For over 30 years, we have successfully represented the citizens of Southwest Florida. For a free consultation, call 239-437-0095. That's 239-437-0095. Our offices are conveniently located in Fort Myers. Visit online at mfh-law.com. Located on the East Trail, locally owned Naples Tiki Bar and Grill is an outdoor eatery next to the Hitching Post Shopping Center. Island-inspired food with a true tiki theme. The best place in Naples to enjoy the beautiful weather in Southwest Florida. The Naples Tiki Bar and Grill offers a great menu for dine-in or takeout. Enjoy our famous pulled pork, huge burgers, and tiki bar cocktails. Don't miss happy hour every day from 3 to 6 and live music seven days a week. See you soon at the Naples Tiki Bar and Grill, 11498 Tamiami Trail East. Visit Jason and Todd at the Diamond District. Are you ready for an event like no other? Join Jason and Todd at the Diamond District this weekend for their exclusive estate buying and selling event. It's time to dust off the old jewelry and take out those fine timepieces you no longer wear. The Diamond District will pay top dollar for your unwanted treasures. Why let your valuable pieces gather dust when they could be putting cash in your pocket? That's not all. For those looking for exquisite jewelry at unbeatable prices, the Diamond District has you covered with a stunning selection of estate jewelry, meticulously curated and priced to sell. From dazzling diamonds and exotic gemstones to timeless Rolex watches, you'll find the perfect piece to elevate your style. Join the Diamond District this weekend for their estate buying and selling event, where they pay more for your jewelry and fine timepieces and sell for less. Don't miss out. Jason and Todd are in the store nearly every day and look forward to shaking your hand and welcoming you to their Diamond District family. At the Diamond District. Mark Miller for Molly Maid. Why Molly Maid, you ask? Trust. Molten was a customer for 15 years. Affordability. Didn't I just say Molten was a customer for 15 years? Worry-free services. Our professional house cleaners are fully insured and a 24-hour warranty. Call Molly Maids today at 239-774-5839. That's 239-774-5839 or online at mollymaid.com slash F-T-M-Y-E-R-S. That's mollymaid.com slash F-T-M-Y-E-R-S. You are listening to Miller and Molten on the Florida Sports Network. Did you call for me? No. No? Okay. David? No, I'm just kidding.
Who would you bet to win the par three contest? I mean, I I wouldn't ever. I mean, I, it's a bet I would. Ne- I mean, it's like betting preseason baseball. It's a bet I never have to worry about making. Yeah. Two times I was there, I did not take in the par three contest. When did you go, David? I went as a uh, fan in 2011 for a practice round, and uh, I worked it in 2017. And instead, I, I left the grounds right as the par three contest was starting and went back to the hotel and worked. <laughs> Listening to Miller and Moulton exclusively on the Florida Sports Network. And now here's Mark Miller and David Moulton. It is the Diamond District bonus hour. Thanks so much for being with us as we get over the hump together on this Wednesday. Miller and Moulton, Miller and Moulton.com, Miller underscore Moulton on X. You can see all three of us, uh, Mr. Miller, Mr. Moulton, and uh, Trent. Uh, we have the mister before us because, uh, well, we have been told by uh, many people, guests, listeners, uh, a coach at a youth soccer uh, match, just how old uh, the two guys whose names are on the show are. So, yeah. Our daughters are the same age, but coach called me Mr. Miller yesterday. Right. <laughs> mm-hmm. You're old. I know. Apparently. I want to give this guy the benefit of the doubt. I think he was being respectful. Mark, did you feel it was respectful? No. Okay. <laughs> no, I felt in front of a bunch of people, he said, hey, old guy. You felt disrespected, At, if anything. 100%. Now, I said something to him after the game. I cornered him, said, enough of this Mr. Miller blank. Your daughter better get some more playing time. She gets plenty of playing time. Okay, good. good. I, I do have a question. In fairness to him, if there was a bunch of dads, would he have referred to all of them as Mister, or do you think that you were singled out because you? No, he, he usually goes, "Hey, parents." Gotcha. And he came over at the softball game last night because he listens to the show. Uh huh. And he heard me talking about the fact that, and I didn't even think I mentioned this on air, but my daughter does a lot of sports, and so she wanted us to stretch. And it was Sunday night. And I'd had a few drinks and I, so I, jumped, I jumped into the stretching with her and I was feeling loose because I had a couple drinks. Right. And when I got up the next morning, I was sore from stretching. Cause you didn't have a couple drinks in you. Right. So right. you were not as loose as you thought. No. And therefore and, you pushed it and then you woke up and you regretted. Yeah. And, so and, and, and I was a little, little sore. So, so you I brought felt, that up. So you felt like a Mr. Miller. I, I felt exactly like a Mr. Miller, and right. he decided to come over last night and say, yeah, Mr. Miller, do you want to lead the team in stretches? Aha! Aha! <laughs> you funny guy! This $15 a game we're paying you is obviously $5 too much. Oh, it's like when Trent has a good line or two on the show, and we go, you know, the 8 bucks we pay you might be a couple shekels too much. I know you're trying to get to 10 bucks a show, but keep it up, buddy. Keep it up. And then sometimes, of course, I don't quit while I'm ahead and I keep talking and then it gets even worse. I keep digging the hole deeper. Uh You do know, just if we continue this off the air thing, on the air, um, Trent's had about a week, week and a half of family. Okay, hardcore family, and now even, so the parents are on their way to Augusta and uh, not taking any of the kids, by the way, to draw the line. We love you only to a point, all right? It's important for parents to draw that line. It is. The kids need to know, hey, you're very important. And here's the line, though. You're not Augusta important. Exactly. Here's the line. Uh, but also, apparently, the grandparents are headed north, right? They are. They're taking okay. off tomorrow. Yeah. So he's going to have to finally meet that girl from Wisconsin. 
He's put it off for as long as he can. And I love the fact, Mark, he's put it off to really close to the draft. The draft that's in Detroit. Maybe that would be a great first date for the two of you. <laughs> yeah. Watch the draft. Well, yeah. yeah. I mean, the Packers are picking 25. The yeah. Lions are 29 or whatever yeah. it is. Or, I mean, you get a little dinner. Get liquored up for three have a hours. Of and just get ready for pick 25. Yeah. You know, and then, you know, your team might trade ahead of theirs. Their team might move up, make a deal. I mean, you know. Then you could place a bet as to who's going to finish first in the division. You know, just... right. Ask all the questions. You know, who's your favorite player? All that she wakes stuff. up, puts on one of your Lions jerseys, and heads home. Oh, I'd be ecstatic if that happened. Okay. That's a job well done if that happens. That's a good point. Convert a Wisconsin <laughs> native becoming a Lions fan. That that actually that would be a that would be a hell of an accomplishment. That would speak volumes. I don't know if you've got it in you. I don't think I do. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I'm I'm self-aware. I don't think I do have it in me. Uh, so, you know, he's he's had family around. He's had the grandparents for a few months. You know, he's had the parents here for like a week plus. You know, a lot of food. You know, they, he went, went clothes shopping. He's got clothes, you know. But now he's going to have to make friends. I've been dreading it. I really have. <laughs> You're a good-looking young guy. What do you mean you've been dreading it? And I, I am very social. I love to talk to people. I love, but it's just I. It takes a lot of effort, you know. And by the time we get the show over with at about ten, and you know my job is done for the day, I kind of just want to go home and like hang out and watch sports by myself. I don't really want to talk someone's ear off. I will, but <laughs> he's like, I've had to listen to two old guys for four <laughs> hours. Okay. The last thing I want to do is hear more talking. I'd rather go to a library and sit by myself than hear more talking. We get it. Understood. Yeah, Understood. But so if you see young Trent out and about, do the talking for him. Okay. Just let him nod, sip his drink, you know, eat his fries. Okay. So just, you know, might have to get you a sign, put it around your neck and what have you. But so that's where we are as a show. We're old and Trent's soon to be lonely. Although today, most, you know, yesterday and the days, days before, we've had references that Trent didn't know the love boat yesterday, had no idea what we were talking about. Right. Had no idea what a beeper was or a right. pager. At right. least he knew who Duran Duran was. So I feel like we've we've done okay today. The beeper and pager came up because it was 25 years ago in the summer when Phil Mickelson was trying to win the 99 U.S. Open and his wife Amy was about to give birth to their first child. And Phil was walking around the course with a beeper, a pager. And if it went off, that's it. It didn't matter if he was leading on the back nine on Sunday, which he was. Did you ever carry a pager? No. I didn't know if in your TV jobs you were required. I mean, because I, I know I for was. personal reasons you would never have carried one. No, I was required, actually. And didn't? No, I, I gave it to the, the, the cameraman. I gave it to whoever. If I was alone, I left it in the car. Honestly, following I'd back, the rules. Yeah, I'd come back and go, oh, wow, they were trying. Hey, did you call? Yeah, I called 10 minutes ago. Uh, I don't know, man. I must have had the volume down. What's up? Yeah, oh, uh, no, no, please. Pager. <laughs> Can't be that important. By the way, do you think the Masters can keep this up? How, how many more years do you think they're going to be able to get away with this? To get away with what? No cell phones. Ever. Till the end of time. Till the end of time. I just, I, I. I don't think that's feasible. Oh, no, no. It's very feasible. Very feasible. I mean, they've made it this far, but I just it's feel very like... feasible. You kicked out your band. You can never come back. I mean, seriously, that that's so you're not allowed to run. Did you see the video on Monday? They opened the course. Okay. And the people trying to get to their spots to put their chairs. Okay. And they're trying to speed walk, but not go too fast. 
because and literally they're going by the master's officials who are standing there, who are like glaring at them. Like that's about as fast as you can go. And Trent, someday I hope you're lucky enough to make it to the grounds of Augusta. Once you go, you realize that all these rules are just fine. It's their little event. Yeah. There's yeah. no place quite like it on planet Earth. And once you're there, you're like, you know, I'm glad there's no phones. I'm glad I don't want to be distracted by it. I actually want to talk to the people I'm with. I would like to just take in the golf. Let's go through the gift shop, buy some apparel. Okay. Let's buy, you know, the most expensive thing on the menu is six bucks. Let's treat ourselves. What did I see a post yesterday on X that $66 is what it would cost you to buy every single item on the concession concession board at Augusta. So that's everything. Yeah. That's every sandwich. That's every dessert. That's every drink. I every think the snack. most expensive thing is like a six a, bucks. A, a, six some bucks. Wine is six bucks. Yeah. Yes. Most expensive thing on the menu is six bucks. All right. It's, it is, it's a neat place. And Trent, as somebody like me, you're turned off by the price of parking. Parking is free. Once they do that for you, I think you go, I'll leave whatever you want in the car. You know, a spouse, a phone, whatever you want me to leave in the car, I'll leave in the car. Parking is free. Fantastic. It's all uphill from or downhill from here. Totally. Smooth skin. <laughs> so my son ended up with tickets. He's going this weekend. Right. And we talk a lot, it, several times a week, almost daily. And he called me yesterday and I answered the phone and I went, oh, you got me a ticket. What time should I leave? <laughs> <laughs> and it's just this long pause. <laughs> no, you didn't get me a ticket? You, yeah, I hate you, to break it to you. I don't have a ticket for you, Dad. Yeah, nothing. Then I just followed up with, you know, I took my dad to the Masters once. <laughs> it's not working, by the way. I was going to say, I don't know if the Catholic guilt works on the oldest. I think it'll work on the youngest. I don't know if it'll work on the oldest. No, he doesn't really, you know, he's There's only part Catholic, if you will. Right, exactly. There's a lot more Catholic with the younger one than there is with the older. So yes. I don't know. if I think you're trying to guilt the wrong kid. Yeah, but he's the one that's going to the Masters. I don't know. I what to know. Tell you. you miss hundred percent of the shots you don't take. <laughs> so I am though. I'm going to pick Shoffley. I mean, honestly, if it wasn't for Scheffler, who would you pick? Matsuyama. Okay, that's who. I, I mean, I and I actually I put uh, some of our hard earned money on him. Really? Yeah. For a top five. I didn't even go win because the money's pretty good for a top five. I'm going to okay. do the same with you for Shoffley. Okay. I was going to say, because there has been no consultation about this at all. I, that's. Huh. Mark's just in charge of the book. Every he, once he in a while, I just fire. Oh, I know you do. <laughs> I know you do. I get a text that said, by the way, we're on the Marlins tonight. Okay. That didn't work out so well, but UConn did. And the under. Listen, by the way, one in 11, one in 11. I mean, the season's over. Yeah. It's done. It's April 10th. Your season's over one in 11. Ah, oh, Miller and Moulton. Thanks for listening. Visit Jason and Todd. At the Diamond District. Are you ready for an event like no other? Join Jason and Todd at the Diamond District this weekend for their exclusive estate buying and selling event. It's time to dust off the old jewelry and dig out those fine timepieces you no longer wear. The Diamond District will pay top dollar for your unwanted treasures. Why let your valuable pieces gather dust when they could be putting cash in your pocket? That's not all. For those looking for exquisite jewelry at unbeatable prices, the Diamond District has you covered with a stunning selection of estate jewelry, meticulously curated and priced to sell. From dazzling diamonds and exotic gemstones to timeless Rolex watches, you'll find the perfect piece to elevate your style. Join the Diamond District this weekend for their estate buying and selling event, where they pay more for your jewelry and fine timepieces and sell for less. Don't miss out. Jason and Todd are in the store nearly every day and look forward to shaking your hand and welcoming you to their Diamond District family. At the Diamond District. Mark Miller for Molly Maid. Why Molly Maid, you ask? 
Trust, Molten was a customer for 15 years. Affordability, didn't I just say Molten was a customer for 15 years? Worry-free services. Our professional house cleaners are fully insured and a 24-hour warranty. Call Molly Maids today at 239-774-5839. That's 239-774-5839 or online at mollymade.com slash F-T-M-Y-E-R-S. That's mollymade.com slash F-T-M-Y-E-R-S. Hello, friends and family of Southwest Florida. Are you looking to tap into the electric vehicle market? Well, look no further because we here at Southwest Florida Golf Carts have just what you need. E-bikes, golf carts, LSVs, scooters, and more. Come down and talk with one of our experienced sales reps, have a soda and a smile, and you could be cruising the streets in your new EV today. Stop by the store or visit our website at flgolfcarts.com and enter for a chance to win $100 off your next purchase by answering John's monthly sports question. You are listening to Miller and Moulton on the Florida Sports Network. So, David, who won in 2011 when you went as a fan? Schwartzel. Oh, right. Okay. <laughs> and then Sergio won in a playoff in 2017. I was working the um, on the dot-com side. I was a a spotter in the booth for uh, featured groups. So, and we were allowed to on Sunday, you're allowed to stay on the air through 16. So once they were done, I left the booth and I ran to the course and I saw the 18th in the playoff. And then I raced out of there ahead of traffic because I actually drove home. Got home in the middle of the night. So they've got 72 hole match bets you got uh, on this site, and they've got McElroy against Shoffley. <sighs> I would take Shoffley. They have Kepka versus Matsuyama. I do think the Brian Harmon thing is going to mess Kepka up. What in Georgia isn't in the middle of nowhere that's not Atlanta? The answer to that might be Jacksonville.
So if you had the money, would you do the map and flag, the 17000 for the week? Here we go. Welcome to the bonus hour, brought to you by Jason and Todd at the Diamond District. And now, here's Mark Miller and David Moulton. 21 minutes past the hour. If you missed any part of the show, Ian Cummings, Seth Everett, Whit Watson, go to millermolten.com, millermolten.com, and download what it is that you missed. Hey, have you heard about this uh, mapping flag at the Masters? Is this the the new high rent district of uh, watching the tournament? The first and only hospitality experience. All right. 17000 for the week. You get access to the tournament, premium dining, and outdoor garden merchandise shop. It's sold out. Of course it is. I'm just saying. It's, it's sold out. I don't know why you would need that. I mean, if money's no object, sure. But I don't know why you would need that. The one thing that's great about the Masters is... There are so many different places to watch the tournament from and be able to see multiple holes. It is because of the the grounds and all of the hills. You can you know you can sit on the hill on six and see sixteen. Uh, you know, as Vern pointed out, just from his perch on sixteen, he can see approach shots on fifteen. He can see tee shots on seventeen. He can see the sixth hole. He can see sixteen as well. Uh, it is it's amazing. And when I was there, they had an actual book that showed you and talked about all the great places to watch from. Now, I have a friend that was at the practice round. He's of the belief that they're selling more tickets to the Masters than ever before. People have commented about that. They feel as if there are more people on the grounds to the point in which they actually think it's getting a little crowded. I've never been there for a weekend. I was there for a Thursday and Friday in the heyday of Tiger and spent my Friday after my dad and I walked the course on Thursday and picked a few spots to sit and watch. He was had a bad back. He was spent. He said, just, I got to post up on Friday. I need a spot. I'm sticking all day. I actually ran into a buddy of mine and he and I were like, we're watching Tiger and my buddy's short. So we were getting three holes. No, nah, he's short. I mean, <laughs> that's me. I'm five eight. Telling you, this guy's short. Right? No, no, no. I, I got it. And so we were getting three holes ahead of Tiger just to get to spots. You know, we went to eight T. We wanted to see him blast one on eight. Wanted to see him tee off on eleven. So we were just kind of putting ourselves in spots where we could see certain shots. But I was amazed at how close you could get to the golfers. Now this is. 17 years ago that I was there all the way back in the odds. Right. But I don't think you need that to enhance your experience at Augusta. The one time I was there, cause I was there twice. The last time I was there, 2017, so I'm at the CBS compound, which is kind of, if you've ever been there, it's near the par three. So it's to the left of 10 down a big hill. You can't see it. Nobody knows it's there. And not too far away, though, is the service road. And this guy says to me, you want to come see something that you never get to see? And I go, sure. Sure. And as I'm walking down the road, I'm honestly expecting an armed guard to pop out at any moment and tell me I need to leave. Give me your credential. You're never allowed back. It was to the left of 11. And so he walked me all the way down to the green left of 11. Okay. Well, you can't go there. You can't go there. Right. And so I'm seeing... Uh, you know, the second shots into 11, I'm seeing uh, T shots into 12, I'm seeing second shots into 13, and I am expecting at any moment in time to be physically escorted off the grounds and what have you. And I'm, you know, I'm thinking the CBS credential is not going to do me any, they don't care. 
No. I, in fact, I'm standing there thinking CBS is going to lose the Masters because I'm standing here. So, yeah. And it's a service road you can't see from the camera. I mean, it's to the right of the trees and the green, and you don't see the road. And Augusta is not a great town. It isn't. It just, no, it's, it's not. I remember when I worked for the Everblades, and we made a trip to Augusta, and the Craig Brush came on the trip. He didn't come on many trips, but he was on that trip, and he had a rental car, and he wanted to get some merchandise from Augusta. So we pull up. He pulls up to the gate, thinking, I don't know what he was thinking. <laughs> But it's right off of Washington, the main one of the main streets of the town. It's across. I mean, you know, I, I joke across from the Hooters. The IHOP, I thought, was a little okay. Cool. Yeah. yeah, I agree. The Hooters is just maybe a hundred hundred yards down, right? So if you, you know, if you went to the IHOP, look to your right, and there's the little placard that says Augusta National Golf Club. And so we pull in, and I mean, a guard came out so fast to turn us around and get us out of that front entrance. You wouldn't have believed it. I sent us around to a service road to a parking, to another, like the caddies entrance, if you will, where we had to, and this was not anywhere near the tournament. This was a month or so before the tournament, maybe two, but we went to a, a guard gate where Craig ordered a shirt over the phone from the pro shop. They brought, he gave him his credit card. They brought the clothes out and said, I'm sorry, we didn't have it in this size have this one <laughs> it's still it's customer service though at least he got it yep they didn't go no you yahoo um did you see or hear much from uh opening day at fenway yesterday the ceremony beforehand the very emotional you yeah you know, first off the, the 2004 red sox probably the most special team in Boston history, you know, breaking I, of the I curse. So. I mean, you know, even more special than whatever you think the O one one Patriots, you know, whatever Celtics team, even Bobby Orr and the Bruins in 70 and flying through the air, you know, the O four four Red Sox are the team in Boston sports lore. So it's the 20th anniversary. They honored them at the home opener. But also, you know, Tim and Stacy Wakefield have just died within the last four or five months. And so, you know, they have two kids, Brianna and Trevor, who are not yet of college age. And Kevin Millar told a story yesterday on the broadcast in which before the game, apparently they did some private stuff. The team did some stuff away from the ballpark. First off, quick tangent. Terry Francona did the private stuff didn't go to the ballpark, did not take part in any of the official ceremonies. That's interesting. That's 13 years removed from getting fired. That's interesting. Plus, Larry Lucchino died recently, and they honored him yesterday, and Terry worked with Lucchino. I find that interesting. That That's worth digging into from some people. But anyway, Kevin Millar told the story, and he said to uh, Brianna and Trevor, he said, look around. We're all your uncles. Whatever you need, say the word. Oof. Pretty powerful stuff right there. Yeah. MLR said, he said probably because we won the last game, but he said, you know, I was part of another team that won the last game. It never was a part of a family like that team. It's weird. That there are t with and obviously the Red Sox are incredibly special with that, but it's amazing. I think all athletes would look at certain teams. You and I have worked for teams. There are there are teams that were close, and even good teams that don't have that same bond. Mm -hmm. Yep, the idiots, the O four Red Sox, self proclaimed idiots, and they trade Nomar. In late July, I mean, you know, they broke up the core. I mean, it you know, didn't know which way that team was going to go. So just some stories emerging. If you, you know, you're a sports fan, you check it out. Special day at Fenway yesterday. Yeah, the Orioles dropped them 7-1. Whatever. Yeah, you got to win that. Sorry, you got to win that game. Well, well I, I do. I know the two hits, too. Homer in the first and only had one other hit the rest of the day. 
I'm with you. Come on, boys. Full house. Everybody's in attendance. We've got to do better than two hits. Hello, friends and family of Southwest Florida. Are you looking to tap into the electric vehicle market? Well, look no further because we here at Southwest Florida Golf Carts have just what you need. E-bikes, golf carts, LSVs, scooters, and more. Come down and talk with one of our experienced sales reps, have a soda and a smile, and you could be cruising the streets in your new EV today. Stop by the store or visit our website at flgolfcarts.com and enter for a chance to win $100 off your next purchase by answering John's monthly sports question. Mark Miller for Molly Maid. Why Molly Maid, you ask? Trust. Molten was a customer for 15 years. Affordability. Didn't I just say Molten was a customer for 15 years? Worry-free services. Our professional house cleaners are fully insured and a 24-hour warranty. Call Molly Maids today at 239-774-5839. That's 239-774-5839 or online at mollymade.com slash F-T-M-Y-E-R-S. That's mollymade.com slash F-T-M-Y-E-R-S. The law firm of Michael F. Hornung specializes in criminal defense, DUI, personal injury, nursing home claims, and auto accidents. I'm a former prosecutor with over 34 years of experience. The information I know is information you need to know. If you've been arrested for a DUI, time is of the essence to maintain your driving privileges. Call the law firm of Michael F. Hornung for a free consultation. At the law firm of Michael F. Hornung, we are committed to excellence in your representation. Being a local attorney with local knowledge is clutch to the success of your case. For over 30 years, we have successfully represented the citizens of Southwest Florida. For a free consultation, call 239-437-0095. That's 239-437-0095. Our offices are conveniently located in Fort Myers. Visit online at mfh-law.com. You are listening to Miller and Moore on the Florida Sports Network. Are you watching? Apparently, this is the Chris Vernon show out of Memphis, and this is how he does Masters updates. <laughs> Brooks kept going ham.
Adam Schefter is reporting that the Cowboys might be a sleeper team in the QB market for the draft. If the Cowboys took a quarterback in the first round, I would go nuts. That would be spectacular. You mean if they took Michael Penix? You got Cowboys? it. Bingo. So they'd have Dak, Michael Penix, and Trey Lance. That'd be their quarterback room. Oh, boy. That's if Trey Lance made the team. Right. Because right. they got, who is it, Cooper Rush? Mm -hmm. Is there backup still? By the way, three of four people would stay home and finish the round today. You mean at the Masters? Mm-hmm. Rough, tough betting against Tiger. He's made like 23 cuts in a row here. Here we go. Welcome to the bonus hour brought to you by Jason and Todd at the Diamond District. And now here's Mark Miller and David Moulton. 22 minutes till the top of the hour, 16 until we're out of here. The home stretch of Miller and Moulton. On this hump day, MillerMolton.com, Miller underscore Molten on X. Our poll question could become reality. Right now it's a hypothetical. But you got Scotty Scheffler and Sam Burns, whose wives are eight-plus months pregnant. Sam Burns and his wife are expecting their first child next week. Scheffler and his wife are expecting it before the month is out. So what if they go into labor? During the Masters, on Sunday at the Masters, what do you do? That's our poll question. Do you, do you WD, which they have both said as soon as they get word that that's it, they're out. She's in labor. We gone. Only one in four of you, however, saying that you'd be gone. Three of four saying you'd stay and finish. My wife said that as a guy, what you need to say publicly is you are leaving at the first sign. But that ultimately it's her call and what she says goes. But publicly, that's the stance you need to take. And my wife, much to my surprise then and now, has always said, nah, stay, finish. What? I'm just curious, if you do that, do you get any say in the name? No, naming yeah. rights are gone at that point. Okay. And if there was a close right. decision between David or Mark, whatever she wanted goes, if you know what I'm saying. Right. Like if they were going to name you after like a family member on your side, I think now all of a sudden it becomes a family <laughs> member on her side, doesn't it? <laughs> now, here's the good news. Okay. You know, your name is Tom after my dad. We were going to name you after his dad. But that blankety blank stayed and finished the Masters. So your name. And then you have to live with that because the wife is going to hold it. Even if she allows it, she's right. going to hold it over your head. No doubt. That'll come up at family meals. Well, I mean, you know, can't take him seriously. He didn't even he wasn't even there for the birth of his Sid. Oh, good. It's time for someone to take back this segment, if for no other reason than to stop David from talking about Meghan and Harry. Here's Mark Miller with Today Was the Day When. We start in 1912. The Titanic set sail. Man, I tell you what, uh, apparently there were some babes on that boat. I mean, apparently that was, that was a, a big singles thing, No. I don't know. A lot of a lot of romance on the Titanic, I heard, but whatever. 1913, the New York Highlanders play their first game as the New York Yankees. The PGA was founded today in 1916. 
Chicago Blackhawks win their first Stanley Cup today in 1934. Jackie Robinson has his first Major League Baseball contract today as Branch Rickey bought out his contract from the Montreal Royals. Arnold Palmer beats Venturi by 1-60. in 60. Player beats Palmer by 1-61. in 61. The Dodgers play their first game at Chavez Ravine today in 1962. Watson wins his first Masters in 77. Played in the L.A. Coliseum, 58 through 61. What was the, what was the left field line? like? It was like 280. Right. Yeah, it was ridiculous. Tom Watson wins his first Masters today in 77. Ola Thobble in 94 wins. Tiger wins his fourth in 05, and Scotty Schefter won the Masters two years ago today. John Madden would have celebrated a birthday today. Don Meredith's 86. Mel Blunt, 76. Ken Griffey Sr. is 74. Brian Setzer from the Stray Cats is 65. Steve Cast's Tasker is 62. And tough guy Denny Vial is 55. Do you think uh, Hester getting in is going to help Has- uh, Tasker get in? Yes, I do. So uh, the ASPCA was founded today in 1866. The Paul McCartney announced he's leaving the Beatles today in 70. Did you have that? I didn't, and I saw it, and I didn't write it down. That's on me. Thank you. I will say, so apparently the safety pin was patented today in 1849, and you had to pay 400 bucks for it. They sold the patent for 400 bucks. 400 bucks. We're still using them 175 years later. I don't know. I don't think he got enough. I agree. So when player won the Masters, by the way, he was the first international Masters champion today in 61. Also, Lee Elder played in the Masters today in 75. That's the first time a person of color had played in the Masters. That's all I got. You've heard folks elsewhere mock Florida is gonna Florida. Well, Mark Miller sees it differently. He calls it the good, the bad, and the ugly. What you got, Mark? Sometimes being technologically ignorant can pay off. Pay attention, David. Okay. (laughs) Thanks, Mark. We go to Maryland where an Annapolis man visited a 7-Eleven store and used the lottery terminals replay feature, which scans old tickets for winners and can print new tickets bearing the same numbers. So this guy buys his stack of tickets. He didn't realize that he had bought some duplicates. So when he bought his tickets back to scan, after hearing the 7-Eleven had sold two $1 million winning tickets, he realized he had duplicates when four of his tickets won $4 each. Then he scanned a ticket that won a million dollar prize. He called his wife before scanning the rest of the stack. He said, we had our crying moment. 20 minutes after that, when I put the ticket down, I went back to the other tickets. He had a duplicate million dollar ticket. Wow. So his stupidity led to $2 million. Good for him. For the bad, we go to Scotland, where police in Scotland said a reported armed man turned out to be a stormtrooper on his way to a comic book convention. The man was dressed in an Imperial Stormtrooper costume with a kilt when he jumped on a Scott Rail train. When he made it back, he was approached by a guard who escorted him to two waiting police officers. He had been reported for carrying a firearm on the train. He had to explain to police that his blaster was a plastic prop. Finally, the ugly. Is that a plastic prop or are you just happy to see me? Thank you very much. For the bad, we go to Germany, where 
in Munich at a museum. A worker at the museum had an idea. He put up his own painting in the museum. He smuggled his own artwork in and hung it in the museum. He was fired. Was it any good at least? You know, art is, you know, beauty in the eye of the beholder. I mean, you know, is it decent? Here's my question. So do you take the other pictures down and hang yours up? You all of a sudden don't break out the hammer and nails and start hammering, do you? I mean, how do you actually put your artwork up in a museum? Apparently, in his role at the museum, he had access to the gallery space outside of opening hours, so it didn't raise any attention to the security staff when he installed his 60-centimeter by 120-centimeter artwork on an empty white wall in a passageway. That is impressive. The spokesperson for the museum did say, all I can say is that we did not receive any positive feedback on the addition from visitors to the gallery. Must have been bad. Must have been ugly. You know, those paint-by-numbers thing never did work out. That is the good, the bad, and the ugly on today, April the 10th, 2024. Well, the NHL is what, Mark? A Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday league. Today is Wednesday, so there's only three games. Of course. One of them is televised, 8.30 on TNT, Vegas at Edmonton. Vegas, I think, includes a playoff spot with a win. Edmonton's fighting for seeding. So is Vegas as to who finishes third in that division and who's the second wild card. Big night in the association, though. And the double dip is on ESPN. Heat and the Mavs in Miami is the front end of it, 7.30. And uh, Orlando's in Milwaukee. The thought is Giannis isn't going to play after the calf injury last night. And so Orlando's a one-and-a-half point favorite. Both teams played last night. Same with the Mavs and the Heat, by the way. But... Orlando lost in Houston. Now they're in Milwaukee, who won at home against Boston. Milwaukee two up on the ma- Magic for playoff seating. But the big game in the association, Mark, 10 o'clock, the second game of the ESPN doubleheader, probably determine the one seed in the West. It's Minnesota-Denver. They're tied. That's a big deal because if you're the T-Wolves, you don't want to, I mean, if you if you get that far, but I mean, Denver has the best home court advantage in the sport. To get them to not have the Western Conference Finals in Denver, to me, is a really big deal. Well, and also the loser then could end up tied with Oklahoma City, who's only a game behind them. I mean, the loser of this game could easily end up the three seed. You could go from the one to the three just by this game. The other thing is, take a look out west at who you're going to play. Because right now, you've got the Lakers and the Warriors playing the 9-10. And then obviously, one's going to win, and they're going to play the loser of the 7-8. So here's the funny thing. Who do you want to play in the playoffs? Your reward for being the one seed could be to get the Warriors or the Lakers. I got you, and I understand that. But you're thinking about winning the conference and having home court advantage and not have to go to Denver four times to me is monstrous. Agreed. Uh, Baseball, I mean, everybody's playing. Got a bunch of afternoon games. You do that on a Wednesday. Rays, 4 o'clock today in Anaheim to face the Angels. Marlins are 7 o'clock tonight against the Yankees. They're not going to fall to 1-12, and are they? Yes. Okay. All right. They're bad. They are. They are. You got uh, five other games in the afternoon. And uh, a full slate of games. Although I don't believe, I believe the Tigers and the uh, Pirates are not playing today. They've got the day off. So... I think they're about the only ones that have the day off. So there you go. I wanted to listen to the Tigers on the radio on my drive today. Not going to get to do it. No, you're not. I'll just re-listen to the show. 
Oh, I'm oh, sorry. Yeah. yeah. But you for the rest of the year, that you're going to listen to, it'll be, we'll be bumping the crew all the way to Tampa. It's always the crew. Is it really? That's the go-to? That's his favorite band, Motley Crue. And it's not close, right? No. It's my favorite artist band, anything. It's just my favorite. It's the best. Uh, you, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, well said. Thank you. you. Got that. Hey, come on now. We all have our thing. I've been listening to old Bon Jovi lately. And yeah, and Trent, let me tell you, you want to you want to get a rise out of Mark Miller, okay? Tell him how great you think Bon Jovi is. Okay. I love John John Bon Jovi. I love yeah. Richie Sambora. I love oh, that whole album, New Jersey, Slippery He's, When Wet. He'll leave the show. And one of if you keep that up, one of the two of you will, leave, will he'll either fire you or We're he'll leave the back. show. I haven't threatened anybody physically in a long time, but Trent and I are going out back after the show. We got to settle this once and for four. Over Bon Jovi. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. My favorite. The only reason he tolerates it is because his wife is a big fan. Huge. That's her favorite. Right. I wonder why. Well, so what awesome. he does is he takes her to the concert. She dreams about being with Bon Jovi and then goes <laughs> back to the hotel room and she's with him. You know, he just. And then regrets everything going exactly. forward for the next few hours. Right. Wonders where her life went wrong. Right. And Mark drives home with a silver medal around his neck. And he's okay with it. It's funny how it works. So the Jags gave Josh Allen $30 million a year today. That's pretty good for a pass rushing defensive end, isn't it? 88 guaranteed. Five for 150. Hmm. All right. Market's been reset. Have a great rest of your hump day. We'll do this again tomorrow with the Masters underway. Miller and Moulton. The law firm of Michael F. Hornung specializes in criminal defense.